This episode of an unexpected podcast is dedicated to my sister, Hillary Demosthenes, turning 30 on the 13th. Happy birthday, Beanie. As they always say that, uh, I don't know, I don't even know who they is anymore, but the proverbial they always say that they, I'm rhyming too much, they can tell when you're pushing a product that you don't believe in or you don't use. Well, guess what? You're not going to be able to get a sniff of that in this commercial because I came home today, yes. Yeah. Uh, Sarah took some time to uh, be at home to take the day off and relax. I came home to the smell of fantasy, my friend, to the smell of fantasy. It was so strong that tears welled in my eyes. I didn't let them fall, Yeah. but I, but I thought about it, right. okay? I thought about letting them fall. And the smell that was transporting me from my beautiful home into an even more fantastical version of my beautiful home, which is really kind of hard to do, honestly. Yeah. Was Firelight Fables candles. You gotta go check out Casey's candles. Firelight Fables candle company. Go check them out on Instagram. Go find them on the web. And the really cool thing is that you can get a 10% discount if you use the promo code Fire It Up. Get some candles, get some wick trimmers. You probably only need one. Get one wick trimmer. Get some, get a sample pack, get some tea lights. Everything Casey does is incredible. It really does. They're, they're all natural. They're good for the environment and they smell unreal. In fact, one of them as is at the end of the candle. You know, how some of those candles you get to the end and it's like, what, 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 what am I getting here? What am I getting out really? of this? Really? Like you some have candles. To... No, I'm some saying candles. You... Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You get to the yeah. bottom. You're like, I know is this a one way relationship. I'm, I'm lighting you. Are you giving right. me anything? Right. With Firelight Fable candles, <laughs> you do not have that problem. Down okay. to the very end of the candle, the scent is just as strong. It's just as 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 immersive, and it transports you to another world. Go check them out. Fire it up. Use that code, 10% off. Get some candles and be transported to another world and another time. Hello, friends, and welcome to an unexpected podcast. I'm Man Dude. And I'm Bra. And we're talking Tolkien. We're coming to you from the Shire of America, the beautiful state of Ohio, in a little village called Amanda, and from Gandalf's Pad in the North Farthing. This week, we're making Ballin, or is it Ballin, and being free the from our Bonds, James Bonds. And you know what? I don't like elves anymore. Yeah, I said it. Glorfindel sucks. He's overrated, <laughs> and I'm glad he was cut from the Fellowship of the Ring. <laughs> anyway, release your inner mate as we break free into Chapter 9, Barrels Out of Bond. <laughs> Wow, dude, I was not expecting you to go that anti-elf right off the bat. It um, sounds like something I would say or write. <laughs> I'm fired you up. Would say. I'm you fired are. up. I, I wrote that in my sleep, meaning I <laughs> dreamed it. Lane woke up and wrote it in a fury. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I honestly, I, I, I actually, I've, I've looked at this doc like five times and I, I saw that in blue and I skipped it every, I, every time I was like, I'm not reading it because I, I saw <laughs> I, how thick it was. I was like, ah, something, something good. There's something good there. Uh, so I was, I was banking on this being one of the times where you didn't look at the doc at all and it was a cold read. Yeah. And you just got into that and started, you know, just absolutely losing your mind, which you kind of did, but with anger. You really brought the anger there. Oh, I could tell where it was going with the elves. I was, I, you know, you know, Glorfindel. <laughs> oh man, you can dude. never, never betray your your uh, your homie no. G. As although, as you call him. Al although, here's the thing: yeah. these yeah. elves, not the same elves. No, they're not. Not the I, same. I was, dude. I was even blown away. Oh my gosh, are we talking about the chapter already? Are I we was talking blown to away. Some really? <laughs> 
I was I was blown away with how different like even their speech was. Like the way they when when you're in there with um Galleon who drinking who who drank and who drank who drunk a gallon gallon oh, man gee seriously uh, right it sounds like I've drank I haven't this is straight water <laughs> that's me <laughs> yeah that's you that's uh, me tonight. but like the way they're talking back and forth was their speech was very interesting it's, it's different from any other kind of it seemed like almost less eloquent did you get that yeah. too then like yep. the 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 uh, maybe the high elves were used to or something I don't know I still can't yeah. tell the difference bro. Yeah, I, I know. Yes, well, it's, yeah. it seems like it's honestly we're speaking of drinks and and stuff. I it seems like they're they're a little bit more into the hard wine. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think the berries in Mirkwood Forest maybe yeah. are a little bit more alcoholic <laughs> than the berries elsewhere in Middle Earth. So, Is this berry berry wine or this, uh, brandy wine or why? Well, it, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, but all I know is it was meant for the king. As, as, it was meant as is the out, king. as is out on the trail, picking up berries, uh, wearing nothing but like a paper bag around his waist, going, "I'm gonna make some really good wine, some really good wine." <laughs> Just collecting berries off bushes. This is how you make the wine. <laughs> Maybe. Oh no, gosh. Yeah. How you doing, bro? How you doing? Hey. I am doing fantastic. It's been a good night. Uh, I, I've uh, I've got a lot of yeah. you know, hey, got a lot of good things going on in my life. Are you married yet, or is that I I no I have I or? have I have not been proposed to yet. You're dude. Okay. You're never. You are never ever gonna get married. You're never gonna settle down. No, you're always I know. gonna be this wizard walking around with his staff trying to That's be right. Mister Cool. You know yep. what? I don't know. Well, maybe I'll be surprised one of these days. You Maybe. might be. Uh, the unexpected happens on the unexpected <sighs> podcast, so who knows what, what could true. happen. But I am feeling good. I am pumped. I am excited. Um, you know, things we're getting into spring, spring weather. You and I have yeah. some secret, some secret unexpected plans that we all, are all kinds laying, and it just makes me pumped. We've been talking this past week, and and I honestly am excited for things to come. It's it's been a while. It has been a while since I've been. I like haven't this, seen you know? your. F yes. Well, I. Well, I was just thinking. I haven't. It's been a while since I've seen your face, not through a screen, and I can't. Dude, I'm looking at you right now. I told you as soon as you got, I was like, "What happened to the other half of you, man?" Look out now. You Look young out. man are are, uh, dude. Because I okay. So, I mean, I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. Go okay. Say it. The bro the the bromance is alive and well. It's on. You know, we dispelled the myth a while ago that we don't like each other, or did we? Are we really friends? Maybe we'll let you decide. I don't yeah. know. Maybe the ruse is still is still active, right? <laughs> active ruse. Um, but I was looking through Instagram, you know, the old the old archives, right? Yeah. Like when we first started recording, and I, and then I saw you pop on here today, and I was like, "Holy crap!" Like Ez is yeah. not. He's literally not the same man. <laughs> not same man. The keto me, and the the discipline and the working out, bro. You look amazing, man. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Your head is still the same shape. Can I tell? It is still a block. It's, I still it's, have a block. It's still head. block. Which I'm <laughs> a, I'm so glad. I thought that your shit, your head was gonna be like all oval shaped or something. I wasn't gonna recognize you. I was scared. I was no, really no, no, scared. No. no, trust me. I I have early childhood photos. That will never change. <laughs> that that is bone structure, friends. I. The good Lord gave me this big old noggin here, and uh, I, I I intend to keep it. So, uh, but you know, dude, it, the crazy thing is, I have just look, look, look. It's night now. We're recording. Uh, we always record yeah. late in the evening. Don yeah, will come, my friend. Don will come, and and we will need to ride at dawn against the yeah. darkness. Now, hold yeah. on a second. You said yeah. dawn was coming, but yet we're riding against the darkness. <laughs> Remember, friends. Hey, obviously, remember in Return of the King, yeah. remember this now. When yeah. it was day, it was night. The darkness was there. I am ready. Mm. I am mm. mounted up, and I am yeah. ready. I, I am like, I'm back in the gym. I mean, mm. I am back in the gym. And I'm telling mm. you, for some reason, it, it, I think I think it's, I think this is all. I'm going to credit all this to King Theoden, because yeah. uh, that is a king. And yeah. I said this weeks ago. It has stuck with me. He laid his life down. You said so that, that months ago. So not that just we, weeks ago. I mean months, months ago. 
dude, and it still sticks with me. It lingers with me. I yeah. sometimes ride to work and I see the sun rising and I, I think, wow, it once <laughs> rose over <laughs> over an army. <laughs> that 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 <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean literally I think I oh my god, that was just as the, is, the battle. As is in Eleanor his car utter, uttering to himself, King Theoden died for my life so that I could <laughs> I could see this sunrise today. That's literally what I say on the way to work in the morning. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's no, no there's, there's nothing, nothing wrong, wrong with that. <laughs> for a it's, for a man of Swolhan, which you are, there's it's nothing an, it's wrong an, with that. It's an appreciation. So no, I think yeah, I it thanks, is. man. I, I I feel better. You look great. I still have yeah. a long way to go, and I want to keep you know keep, keep at it. But dude, I tell you what, uh, I, I feel I do really I, I feel good, and um, you know I've been getting organized. I got other I got other things going on in my life. You know about some of the secrets. I got some things I do. happening. And um, let's just say I might be I'm wandering into Lothlorien, you know, <sighs> I'm wandering, I'm wandering. This wizard's been wandering for years, for yeah, years, man. and yeah. uh, I will continue to, to to wander until I find my way. You know, and my have, have and, you, and you know what? My way may just be to wander. I don't know yet. I don't have know. you ever wandered and wondered at the same time? And if you have, what is that? Want wandering? It that is would called, be the ultimate. It is called a wandering. Get it? It's called okay. a wandering. It's a thing that you do, right? Wand. It's that a makes wandering. me think of like Harry Potter or something. Oh, like you get carry that out of here. What if you were wandering with a wand? Interestingly, Gandalf is described as having a wand at one point in The Hobbit. Did you know that? No, I think he is. What? I think Where? he is. Well, that maybe he's Check got me. it like hidden. Check me, friends. Yeah, someone check. Someone check. Pretty sure at one point is referenced as a wand in The Hobbit, and I because okay. I read it and I was like, I can't wait to make a Harry Potter reference to you. And I, at the time it passed, it never and happened. I, and I, or never, is it in the, you know, is it in the future? Do you know if it's in the future or not? It might be because I can't remember yeah. actually, but I, I don't think it was earlier. But anyways, point. Are being, you sure that wasn't like a euphemism? You just kind of I imagined. I think or, it was <laughs> actually when they were in the Misty Mountains. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sure, sure. In the Misty Mountains, yeah. Okay, okay. All Jeez. right. Jeez, wow. Wow. Keep it clean, young man. <laughs> I'm, wow. just I'm, wow. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, I'm hey, I'm doing well. See, you drinking that coffee. I talked to your yeah, wife baby. tonight. She's doing well. How are you doing? What's she going looks on great, over there? doesn't she? She does. Uh, yeah. Everything is good, man. Um, yeah. We're we're uh, Sarah is expecting baby number four, crotch fruit. As I, you know, as that there's that young lady who who uh, who embrace who, it. Who, Man, I dude, I I think it's freaking hilarious. I uh, <laughs> I'll never forget that comment of I came here for Middle Earth talk and conversation, not to hear about some crotch fruit. I'm <laughs> out. I'm and out. And since then, the whole the term crotch fruit has has stuck. So crotch fruit number four uh, will be arriving in September. So uh, we are uh, you know raising our three beautiful girls, uh, going to work trying to carve out some time with each other, which is about once a month and, and, uh, just enjoying the freaking ride, dude. It's nuts. It's nuts. It's nuts. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, baby, uh, baby four will be here around the same time as LEP four, uh, which will be, which will be crazy. Um, but, uh, yeah, everything's, everything's great, buddy. Um, I, I feel, especially after like last week and, and podcasting and everything, I feel a renewed, sense of uh yeah. passion and energy i literally feel like in a way that we broke free of some bonds uh um, yeah i hear you and i hear you and it, it was just awesome and we got really uh, uh just I, I think coincidental amazing like um uh messages and letters from people this week that were amazing so a huge shout out to matthew johnson sent us a beautiful letter i'm gonna actually read it to you when we're done here um sure Charlotte Hinton, you know, the beautiful Charlotte Hinton has re yes. reached out to yes. us and and uh, just said how much she misses us and how much uh, uh, we mean to her. And of course, you know, she means so much to us. Uh, Brian Higgins, um, you know, the man who flew a Gondorian and American flag in a warthog for us, uh, reached out to us and just just dropped a line to us, which is amazing. Uh, George Shook sent us a couple books. They're sitting in the I still haven't had time, but George, thank you so much. Sent us a couple books to read. Um, they're sitting in the, in the post office in Amanda and, uh, Brent Rossman from Mansfield, Ohio sent wow. us a, a, uh, yeah, just in the North farthing sent us, uh, well, I, I don't, I don't know if Brent lives there, but the, the coffee company that he 
sent us is is up in Mansfield. It's Goldberry Coffee Company. What? There's a Goldberry Coffee Company. Let me let me make sure I get that right. Roasting Company, Goldberry Roasting Company. Check that out, dude. Wow. He sent us a, a couple bags of Java. There's a the Goldberry blend and um, a Bombadil blend. Just so, so That's thoughtful. Unreal. Uh, it it That's was unreal. a beautiful gesture. And then also one of these stickers. So I told him when, when uh, things calm down and everything's more normalized or whatever, we'd meet him up there for a cup of coffee. And yeah. And uh, maybe we could record his Tolkien story or something like that. So that'd be sick. Anyway. Be sick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. When you guys reach out to us like that, it means the world to us. Um, and uh, I, I, yeah, like, like we hear, we hear from you and. It really does. It really does. Uh, I don't know, man. It feels like a real fellowship. You know, it feels like, um, I don't know. It's, it's nuts. It's nuts. So we really appreciate it. It really does make a difference. So thank you for when you do that. It, it uh, don't ever think that it's, uh, it's not, um, it's not taken lightly. It's, it's not taken for granted. So we, we really appreciate that. No, that, that French, that friendship. So it's, yeah. it's truly not actually, um, as Lane was saying that I just had to type off a message. I was, you were talking about Charlotte. And so I was just sending a message out. Um, just because like, yeah, like, thanks so much. I mean, like it's, yeah. it's huge that we have people who want to support and want to help us and want to, um, send us encouragement. I think that's, I think that's huge. And, and really, man, it, it is like a turn. It was like the turning of a page or I don't know what, I don't know what you call it, but like yeah. that last episode was very therapeutic for us. And it was, it was good. I was, it was good to get back into it. And, um, gosh, our, our plans have changed. <laughs> like after one yeah. episode, like, like life has changed. Like plans have changed. I, I, ah, oh man, it is, dude. I haven't really even told you this yet. So I know, like, Lane and I talked for like a half an hour, an hour before the show, and um, I'm up here in the North Farthing. I'm up yep. here in Gainuff's in Gainuff's hut, and yep. I've been doing my thing. I am so excited to come down and see this guy soon. Uh, I'm I'm fully vaccinated, and I, I and we're we're gonna be safe and all like all that good stuff. But um, we're brewing something. We're yeah. brewing something like you've never seen, like you've never seen. And I'm telling you, yeah. I'm just pumped, man. I'm just, I, I'm so, it, my, things look like bright. There, there's hope. There is there's always hope. hope. It is hard to yeah. see. Mm. It is, uh, you know, the, the light sometimes can be drowned out by the darkness, but like if you focus on it and you keep searching and you keep looking, it'll be there. And I'm telling you, everybody who sent us a message, like you said, they were amplifying that for us. Basically, yeah. they... I'll, I'll, let, let me give it to you like this. You and I had been had been wandering through the dark for a little bit. They saw the light way over yonder, and they yeah. were waving and saying, hey, guys, it's over here. And I'm telling yeah. you right now, you guys have no idea what that means to us in a dark time, in a pandemic. Like, I am – because, I, I like, again, Lane, I'm at work, and I see him come through on the email. I see him yeah, on the I Facebook know. Messenger. I know. I and know. you send me messages about it. And I and thank you, by the way, for, for replying to – because – there's so many people that I, I wish we had more time to reply to every single person. And if we don't reply to you, I'm telling you, at some point we will. We're going to get to you guys in your Bywater post. We've been we've been talking about how to deal with that. We have over like yeah. 500. I think we have like over 500 or something. Yeah, yeah it's I insane. Mean, so it, it's, it's just cool. It's it's a it's a good, uh, you know, air quote problem to have. It, it's just we love you guys, man. We really yeah. do. Like Lane and I, uh, gosh, we just want to spread positivity. We want to spread positivity. We want you guys to have a good time when you come here. We want you to leave this podcast and be, you know, kind of like revived. Talk about something maybe you learned at the water cooler at work or whatever it might be, or just enjoy it or whatever. It does. It doesn't matter. We do. That's what. That's what we get from this. Like we get kind of this this fun escape to Middle Earth, and it's just epic. It yeah, is so it is. awesome. It is so. And those, uh, uh, you know, especially in in times that are a little you know, uh, less normal. I mean, like this is, this is had to almost become normal for us. And it's just been so different. Like not, yes, not being, not hanging out before, not going to get dinner, not right. shooting the breeze. You know what I mean? Getting, you know, sniffing the night the, breeze, sniff, sniffing the night breeze. Yes, sir. Uh, and so uh, we still have this time obviously, but that extra support from you guys, like who knows, it may keep us podcasting longer than we felt like three months ago or two months ago or something. So it does have, have more of an, uh, an impact than you probably even realize. So, yeah. Um, so huge shout outs to everybody. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. bro, this is a random one. Okay. This is a random on. one, but I had, I, like I had this, 
I had this thought today at school. I don't know why. Random thoughts have been just uh, like drowning my my mindscape. But you and I both have really unique names, right? Like, yes, you're the only Ezra I know. I'm probably the only Lane you know. Yeah, is that fair to say? That is fair. Yes. Okay. Uh, have you ever wanted, like, especially as a kid, did you ever want to change your name? A one hundred percent. Let me tell you, okay. I actually right. did it. I actually did it. No, you did not. This is this is hysterical. Paul? Did that you call yourself Paul? This is hysterical. Okay, yeah. I was at the right. YMCA first day. <laughs> First day of uh, a preschool or whatever it was. Mom drops me off, leaves me you there. Did, you told him that your name wasn't Ezra? The teacher who she dropped me off with. There's two teachers in the room. I just yeah, did four yeah. fingers. Two teachers. Uh, I'm sorry. Four teachers. <laughs> oh, four teachers. Two yeah. teachers. Um, the one teacher she talked to, the other teacher I went over and she said, what's your name? Other kids had already, as I came in the door, couldn't say Ezra. <laughs> and I was already getting the vibe that this wasn't going to go well. My first interaction with other kids. And you know me, the ultimate negotiator going, you know what? Let me make life easier for them. That's, that's fine. <laughs> and, and, and so I said, just call me Paul. Just call me Paul. And so obviously my middle name is Paul. Ezra. Yeah, yeah. Paul Kirk. And so they, so get this, get this. This is a, this is a true story. And this was a story that well known in my family. My mom came to pick me up and (laughs) she said, and she said, there's my son Ezra and motioned me over. And I waved to mom and they said, they said, ma'am, that's Paul. They said, what's his name? And and she said, Ezra. And she said, no, ma'am, that's Paul. We all, that is Paul. And they said, they called the sheriff lane. They called the sheriff. You cannot steal children from the YMCA. So my mom had to wait. And she had to wait until she had to wait until the sheriff showed up and she had a little picture. She had a little picture of me with the thing. She almost had to go get my birth certificate. Like he's, That's my son. I was the last one there. I was sitting in the room playing with the teacher while the sheriff was like, what's your actual name? Why did you say that your name was Paul? Well, Ezra's hard to say. And so... <laughs> I am telling you an absolute true story. I'm tired, and, dude. I'm tired. <laughs> I mean, it's true. It's true. So, like, I negotiated. I, I am the ultimate sort of, I want you guys at home to feel comfortable. Dude, the fact, the fact <laughs> so, that you as a preschooler were like, this is going to be kind of hard for them. I, <laughs> I'm going to make it easy. I'm thinking about them, not about me. Call me right. Paul. Right. Just call me Paul. Just call me Paul. Paul. Oh, my gosh. Dude. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Ezra That's was so too much- hard. It was too hard. That's, that's so much funnier than I thought. <laughs> that I, thought I, I, didn't. <laughs> I mean, I'd be like, I, I remember, I, I, I remember for years, I remember for years, mom telling me that story. It was like, like when I went to kindergarten, it was like, tell them your name, be proud of your name. It's biblical. 15th book of the Bible. Your father named you like, oh, oh my gosh. And I was like, okay, 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 okay. Your poor mom, dude, like just sitting there going, no, that's actually my kid. And I was well, even waving, he says, saying, I was like, hey, hi, mom. mommy. But like, I'm still like the teacher. Yeah. One teacher's yeah. trying to like protect me. Like, Paul, Paul, you don't know that lady, Paul, do you? Just yeah, sit that's here. My just, mom. <laughs> Paul, we're playing with blocks right here. And I'm like, oh my. I didn't even remember it. I, I just, I just knew it. I, we always knew it as a story. It was kind of funny to tell around, you know, oh. holidays oh, and stuff. Geez. So, Oh my gosh. I'm dying, dude. Yeah. Wild. I am dying. That's crazy. I'm gonna start calling <laughs> you Paul just every once in a while to mess with you. <laughs> Mine's not nearly as good as that. That's freaking hilarious. Oh my gosh. So I never had I never had the gumption to tell someone that my name was something else. Uh what would happen to me though? I got the same thing. So kids couldn't say Ezra. Adults yeah. had no they would be like, "Dwayne? Is it Wayne? Yeah. Lance? The, Lance? Yeah. I got I got Dwayne, Wayne, Lance, Zane, Blaine. Everything but Lane. And I was just wow. like, I got to the point where I was like, I'm fed up with this, man. You know what? I'm changing my name. I got to, and I always, I always like thought, wow, Lane is like one letter from lame. It's one letter from Elaine. Like I have a girl's name. I got a girl's name is what I always thought. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so I was a huge Randy Moss fan. You remember Randy Moss? 
Oh yeah. Absolutely. And I, I loved home improvement and I always thought like Jonathan Taylor Thomas, of course he was so cool, right? Like all the right. girls love Jonathan JTT. He was Simba and he was Randy on tool time <laughs> or, or home improvement. So I wanted to be called <laughs> Randy and, uh, Thank wow. God that didn't stick. No offense to anyone whose name is Randy, because like if you're a Randy, you own it. But can you imagine? You have to. Being, being, can you imagine being named Randy Smith and just like no. I would only think of like Austin Powers. And I, I tell Sarah that, and she thinks it's the funniest story. She'll sometimes look at me and just go, Randy, Randy, Randy. And just shake her head and laugh like you wanted to be called Randy. So anyway, I'm glad it was just a phase, Paul. Uh, Paul and Randy. That's how we should open next next episode. Paul and I Randy. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Just a little yeah. just a little random one. All right. Um, on to drop and eaves. Um, Amazon show news. Go check out the actors and actresses and J.A. Bayona's uh, Instagram stories. Yeah. That's where you're gonna find all the juice you need. Yeah. Um, we're gonna I think we're gonna record uh, some videos at some point. We just have a bunch. We're gonna do like a like a potluck. Like yes. a potluck, right? We're at the kids' table. Kids love potlucks, and we just have all these different ideas. I even have a couple of um, like adjustments on castings. I, I think that Joseph Mall could be a few different people. Um, we actually got a freaking email after last we episode. We did. Yes, we did. We got a freaking from email from James O'Connor, our friend in Aotearoa in the land of the long white cloud, New Zealand. James Heard our message, and I'm going to read this in uh, in the video just because it's amazing, but I'll give you the synopsis. Um, James is amazing, okay? Uh, he's a huge fan, H had been before the Amazon show thing was even a, a deal, had always been a huge fan of um, Joseph Mall, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I, think he, I think Joseph Mall played Odysseus in a Netflix uh, series called Troy, all right? So big Joseph Mall fan. He lives to the west of Auckland, kind of in the, the Waitakere, Piha area, uh, which is, uh, well, I guess we didn't know this before, but he ran into Joseph Mall. What? Yeah. That which, which and is, he was like, he insane. went up to him, he went up to him and, and just said like, hey, um, you know, uh, great. Uh, I love you. Like, I love you. You're one of my favorite actors. I loved you as Odysseus. Um, he said Joseph was kind of like sweaty and, and so they had a, just a very brief conversation. He didn't want to keep him for whatever he was doing, but he wanted to go up and acknowledge him and say, hi, I'm a huge fan of yours. But he did ask James, James did ask. He said, are you here? Uh, you know, are you in the area filming for the show? And Joseph yeah. confirmed. He said, yes. Yes. And yes. so, um, it's cool. <clears throat> so the, uh, Piha in the, in the West coast is very interesting. There's, uh, like black, sand volcanic beaches there's uh one of my favorite places we went was lion rock and it's this big standalone rock like on the beach all the rest it's been like carved out by the by the you know the waves over time brutal brutal waves like some of the best and most dangerous surfing in the world is done on the west coast of of uh of new zealand right really? out on to the to the west of auckland yeah like it's scary like those waves are they're they're big time. They're scary. Um, yeah. just awesome, like awesomely powerful. But um, it it's a rugged, gorgeous area that is just like as soon as you get off, you're in like jungle. Uh, like the Waitakere Ranges are nearby. There are these trails that Edmund Hillary, Sir Edmund Hillary, used to run. He used to run these trails. So it's I I've, I've been yeah. in that area. James, you know, is is uh you know is from that area. That's 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 what he calls home. And so uh, I don't. It's just really cool. It was really cool to hear from him. He has more. He shared a little bit of um kind of his story and what he would like to see in 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 the show so i'm going to save that for a youtube video because i, I want to yeah. kind of expand on that and, and talk about yes. that but uh anyway it was so cool it was so cool to hear from james like i didn't think we'd hear from anybody and uh, i guess he had posted it in the facebook group a while ago but we're not we're not um we're not on facebook anymore right. so didn't see it i think that this happened back in january so anyway a couple months ago they were just to the west of auckland out in 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 the uh you know the west coast area filming so uh, should should so. we should we rebrand this podcast? Your inside source 
for what i mean are we maybe inside we, sources now well sh should we call the one clickbait.net and do they want a tip <laughs> yeah <laughs> should we hit them up hey, i mean hey, is this not who are your people we got james is, who, who is are this, your people? yeah we got james is this not newsworthy like what james <laughs> met him awesome. on the street out there that's, a, that's it, an eyewitness account i mean and he that's, said he said he was a, he was just a lovely dude um yeah you know said he was just so kind and courteous and uh yeah, he said his, his wheels were turning after talking to him. He just, oh, just I, be, I bet thinking they were. About, uh, and he's even, I think he even said that he was toying around with opening like a, a little coffee cart or a coffee stand because he figured he could, he could probably, uh, you know, if they're filming out there, they would probably stop by and grab coffee either to or from yeah. uh, location and, and stuff like that. So I told him he should go for it. I said, do it, man. Please do. I said, I said, uh, you know, don't Please go out of your do. way, James, but if you see anything else, let us know. And also, it's exciting. Hey. James, if any yeah. of them want to cut, if any of them, look, I mean, guys, <laughs> we're here, okay? The lines uh, are open. You can call us at 1 800 Middle Earth. Um, <laughs> that'll get you ready. <laughs> that will get you here. Oh, that's awesome. So, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. So, more, more coming uh, on YouTube soon. We just, we want to, we have a bunch of different, I don't know, like different ideas we want to kind of just discuss in a mashup. And yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. We've been less obsessed with trying to, I, I don't know. I, I just I, everyone's got opinions and everyone has ideas and everyone has just, yeah. sor sources. Or, and yeah. when everyone's when everyone's doing that, I'm just kind of like, all right, maybe we maybe I don't want to. You know, maybe I want to be opposite. Maybe I'm subversive. I don't know. Opposite or, day. Yeah, I'm I'm contrarian. That's fine. Whatever. I just I'll wait for the hey. show to come out and I'll be surprised. Mm -hmm. So I don't care. But Guys, anyway, um, maybe <clears> we're <throat> actually there in spirit and we actually yeah. do know what's going on. All right. We're paying it. We're paying him. McKay. That's they haven't doing. just filmed season one. They filmed season two. All right. Just so Man, you guys isn't that, know. Isn't that nuts? Well, I mean, that's kind of possibly could be true. They're probably uh, working on it. Yeah. Which is wild. Yeah, it is. It uh, is. Oh, wild. Oh, oh, real quick. I had a thought yeah. earlier while you, were, while you were talking. And sometimes I don't always remember these thoughts. So let me get a little nugget in here real quick. Saying I talk too much. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying this old wizard's okay. mind is just a little bit uh, addled. I saw you uh, raise your hand, and I should have just called on you right away. I was, that was well, rude. you know. I, again, I'm just a, I'm just bad a, teacher. You know, <laughs> I, yeah, thanks, Mr. Smith. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, but no, I was thinking about I was thinking about Numenor. I was thinking about Numenor. Yeah, and I was mm -hmm. thinking about <clears throat> New Zealand. Yes. And it being this little island that you were saying it those is. waves are just pounding against, and I'm thinking yes. out there mm -hmm. in like in the middle between these big continents, and here you have New Zealand representing Numenor. I really could yeah. not believe that. I was like, wow, that actually makes a lot of sense. So, yes, yes. Anyway, uh, and I was even thinking too about the West Coast. I was like, I wonder if uh, now maybe this is thinking way too literally, but around the time of. I believe now my timeline's fuzzy. I got it up over on the piano actually because I printed off the second age timeline events so I could try to familiarize myself with them more. But they, the Numenorians, were going to the west coast of Middle Earth, right? They were sailing to uh, Middle Earth. It's you know the main mainland of Middle Earth, and they were sailing into that. Uh, I can't remember the area, man, but it's the place where they landed and they, they began. Uh, yeah, deforestation and, yes. and building building the naval fleet and I think that lines up with a time where this uh, show could potentially highlight so I was also yeah. thinking too about so here we go speculating I said we weren't going to do this but I, want, I didn't want to I didn't want to forget this one I was also thinking about like all of the men from the east the easterlings and the southrons that come and fight in the third age and we know that Sauron or uh, Anatar disappears into the east, right? Yes. For yes. a few hundred years. Yeah. And we don't necessarily know what's going on. Um, we just know that like he's kind of building cults, essentially. Was he like, did he go there as a god to build this... Uh, like zealous commitment to him that he would use then later. Did he manipulate the blue wizards who also went East Preach, and son. reportedly formed cults so that he could uh, summon reportedly. them when the, yeah. who the, who could, he could then summon them when the time was right. Because I almost have a crazy idea as that we won't even, 
I don't know. Could could they could we for a season not even see Anatar, not even see Sauron? Is Maybe, he not even yeah. is he not even cast yet? Like could that be one of sure. the big curveballs where we're we're guessing like what well, who is who is gonna play Sauron? Who's gonna play Sauron? Nobody yet. Nobody yet. Right. Somebody everyone will, everyone, yeah. everyone thinks it's Joseph Maul. I don't think Joseph Maul is gonna be Anatar. I think he's gonna right. be someone else. So anyway. Right. Yeah. I like um, I like that. I like that thought. Lots lots to think about, lots to talk about. It's just yeah. fun to have uh, you know, to to come up with crazy ideas. Absolutely. Yeah. And ill and ill informed. That's what I really love about Come it. Come on now. Uh, I, I, uh, yeah, it's great. Um, <laughs> in other corners of Middle Earth, uh, you heard in the commercial our, our, uh, our promo with uh, Firelight Fables Candle Company. Go, go get your candles. Uh, use the promo code Fire It Up, 10% off. It's amazing. You, there's not a bad scent. She does not have a bad smelling candle. They're exceptional. Um, to go along with that, though, we have something very special in the works. Um, young man named Cameron Hansen. If you Come don't on. know his name, you will know his name. You will. Uh, he is um, a videographer, filmmaker, extraordinaire. He reached out to us maybe like a month and a half ago, us and Casey with Firelight Fables Candle Company, and said, would you guys and girl be up for a commercial? I and mean, I was like... Hold on. What like what? What do you mean? That's all I'm gonna yeah. say. Right. <clears throat> uh-huh. Uh huh. Go check him out though on Instagram. Just look up Cameron Hansen. Uh, search on any uh, browser. Cameron Hansen. His website will come up. He has made some incredible uh, films, and his videography is his cinematography is incredible. It's it's unbelievable. So. Um, Go ahead, young man. You guys see your hand up. I just, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say, I, uh, I, you, you encouraged me to go look him up, and I did mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, after after you after you said that, and I went and looked. I was holy, yeah, holy. So, so it's I really mean, cool. We're, I am we're <laughs> pumped. I know, I know. We are working on something something epic. Uh, it's just going to be a blast, if not, nothing else, for us. And yeah. um, I think he's probably the only guy who's going to be able to make us look look pretty. Um, look pretty heroic and epic presentable <laughs> yeah maybe that maybe that's all i'm going maybe just like not uh yeah not disgusting but yeah he'll he'll do a great job it's going to be fantastic so right i just uh, hope it's not yeah. opposite day on recording because you know i'm <laughs> a dry guy so like we just got to keep this nice and dry all right so <laughs> nice and dry nothing fancy all uh, right man that's that's all i got my brother we're into the uh the reread Really, we're into yeah. the reread, uh, my friend. You put some really good maps in here, and I'm glad that you did. I I really like yeah. looking at kind of. I knew you would. Where we're at, you know, what it looks mm-hmm. like inside this. Um, you know, we're in the upper halls. Uh, mm-hmm. Gosh, we're we're near the Forest River. We've got the cellars, yeah. the cells. We've got all sorts of stuff. The innermost cell, you know, yeah. where where we're keeping Thorin. So that was pretty yeah. cool. That's pretty cool to see that. And yeah. So it was it was cool to see in the uh comparison uh I guess really or maybe the the um like uh the way that it it was it differed from the goblin caves, right? Cuz if yes. you think about it, yeah. we were we were just not that long ago underground going to see a different king and taken prisoner. It's a very mm-hmm. similar situation and but instead of goblins, it's elves. So the treatment is better, but still being held hostage and underground under a mountain and uh, pretty, pretty hopeless. Like if it wasn't for Bilbo in this chapter, again, uh, Thorin was ready to give it up, man. He was, he was ready to give it up. He, he thought he, he was, was alone. He didn't know his friends. Yeah. 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 He didn't know his friends were captured and he thought this is the only way out. And like, uh, likewise, Bilbo, it was amazing. So I ragged on Gandalf a couple chapters ago, right? Yes, you did. I ragged on Gandalf. Where where is he? Why did he leave? And then Tolkien, as he always does, and his, uh, you know, um, all all omniscient, you know, omnipresent, yeah, all the omnis, yep, uh, you know, foresight um, explains that that perhaps this is why he left, that perhaps that he he left so. Bilbo would have the opportunity to prove himself in truth without any kind of uh, 
aid from anyone. Because if it's not for him, story ends here. Yeah. Story it, ends here. It does. And, and here, yeah. here's, here, here's what I've liked doing more with The Hobbit is, is, t- is talking about some of these bigger takeaways. We'll go through the chapter for sure. And we're going to dig in oh, okay. here. But, but I do want to, I want to bounce. I, oh, here we go. Uh, I, I, I want to bounce around for, for just a little bit here because one of the things that I thought was really interesting is you just said it. Gandalf is, is it's hinted at that maybe he understood the other magic mm-hmm. associated with hobbits. Yeah. Because the ring is not all powerful. You know, the ring does not uh-huh. complete. A shadow is referenced. Like your shadow could give yeah. you away in this chapter, right? Bumping to into somebody. Yeah. Bumping in. Yep. So shadow mm-hmm. bumping in. Also noise, sound. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the so a hobbit, I think Bilbo probably could have snuck uh, around on his own. It would not have been as freely. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't has mm-hmm. uh, have been whatever. The ring amplifies his abilities. Is is mm-hmm. the way I, is the way I kind of look mm. at it. But um, I think I still think Bilbo would have been able to successfully almost slip away. It actually happens with the goblins. You know, I mean, unnoticed. Yeah. Like you, you see in the film, they do a really good job. He hunches down. No one sees yeah. him. Yep. And Over, it's always overlooked. been, yeah, it's always been hinted at mm-hmm. with, I mean, Mary and Pippin do it. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it happens. We, we talk about the game of hide and go seek between elves and hobbits. I think the hobbits mm-hmm. win. I think the mm-hmm. hobbits yeah, yeah, literally yeah. win. I, I, you have to have, they have to have some perk. What's their one big advantage? And it's that if they want to go unseen and unnoticed, they can. Yeah. Um, and they may still be going unnoticed today in the world that we was live it, in. Watch out. Yeah. I, well, I mean, that's true. It, is it in the beginning of this book where uh, I can't remember if it's in his description of what hobbits are that when the, you know, bumbling big folk like us come rolling through the hills that they, you know, they're able to evade even us that we're so uh, careless and, um, uh, ca- uh, yeah, careless is the right word that we don't even notice them, you know, that they're able to just go into their holes and, uh, elude, um, the big yeah. stupid folk, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just thought it was so interesting. You know, I'm like, okay. Um, it, uh, well, as, as we dive into it here. Yeah. How much time? How I, much time? I was, I literally have written up at the top. How long? How long? I, yeah, how long? It was a weary long time that he lived in that place. Lived in that place. All alone and always in hiding, never daring to take off his ring, hardly daring to sleep, even tucked away in the darkest and remotest remotest corners he could find. Yep. Yeah, it's cra- it's crazy. And I so I mean it's they're having an autumn celebration, right? An autumn yes. feast. Dude, wasn't it like wasn't it summertime when they were at Bayorn's house? Well, yeah, that's, I was that's trying what to I keep can't track. remember. Yeah. I was trying to keep track of the seasons. And I'll look actually, it up. I'll look actually, it up real quick. There, there is an inconsistency. Apparently, people are trying to make sense of the of the lunar cycle um, and oh, okay. the Hobbit. There is some people try to make it work, and um, Barrels Out of Bond is is a chapter where in which you could play with time in here. I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's just. It seems yeah, like true. so yeah. much time could go by in this chapter. It's just, it's unreal. But uh, yeah, I, I, as you look that up, I'm going to get into it. So yeah. basically, the, the, the start of this, they had their, their battle with the spiders, if you remember. And, and Bilbo is, is fighting those spiders. They get out of that uh, predicament. Thorin, though, was actually cap- captured prior. And in the last chapter, we figured out, you know, he's in the innermost cell um, and so we have our, uh, our, our dwarves are, are starting off with this chapter, trying to figure out how to get out of this forest. They don't know what to do. Um, hmm. They, so they actually, I think they say, let's see, yeah, eight out of the 13 guessed uh, t- the, the, the direction in which the path lay. And they're trying to get their way, you know, again, out of the forest. Um, as soon as they start to make towards a path, outlept wood elves with their bows and spears and it said that the doors just have knives and that they're no match and honestly they're yeah. kind of happy to be captured so they're kind of like all right cool uh 
thanks for showing up finally and yeah. not running away and causing us to fall asleep and pass out and capturing yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so so that's kind of how this this starts is they're captured by the wood elves and they're taken in for questioning. But um, it's really once we get in here that time just doesn't seem to really. Did you find anything? I don't know if you found anything about it. But I, like, I, it? Well, yeah, I found a couple things. I found a, a blog um, with things, and it, it's like this. It's very interesting. This person has calculated Bilbo's activity, uh, like oh, wow. both distance and days. I'd have to double check this, but it looks like. Um, oh, they even have a comparison between Frodo and um, Bilbo, like on a time and distance graph. That's crazy. Time and distance traveled. <laughs> That's nuts. Wow. Um, yeah, so I'd have to check this. Obviously, you even have broken down into steps per day. Wow. To to See, make it in a certain amount of days. This is crazy. So Bilbo versus Frodo Baggins. Uh, uh, let me see here. Much more athletic than his uncle, since he will take four. Uh, Frodo took four point eight million steps, which is around twenty six thousand steps per day to reach Mount Doom in one hundred and eighty five days. Uh, this is nuts. This is uh, I'll share the link, and maybe we could even post it in the whatever. Yeah. This is very interesting. So it looks like, according to their calculations, they were there twenty days, which especially in that place. Days. And okay. I mean, I was I was wondering like, is this a month? Is this I two think months? it's a bit long. I it feels like a bit longer than that. But I mean, but I then I again, hit, you know, then again, you're starving. Um, there's no daylight. Right, you know the, I you would lose track of time. You'd have no, cl I mean, I, you could calculate it, you could keep track of it, but if you're worried about other things like being found out, and then like trying to you know eat, steal the food to eat, um, yeah, and then scheming on how you could escape, you probably would, you would lose track of time. You'd go mad a little bit. I yeah. Think. Well, yeah. and that's what that's. I think the reason I think I, I guess I kind of, well, it's. It's it's strange, but I think that Thorin would hold out a bit longer. But then again, I have no idea what it's like to be in a in a prison cell, held well, up. Well, then there how much and, longer? Yeah, how much longer know? was he was he there than they were? Yeah, good point. I don't know it's, that either. Yeah. Um, right, right. Uh all right. Well, let's let's get into this. So, I mean, Bilbo in the beginning of this is um is 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 also captured okay. with the dwarves, but he is he is able to evade them, as we said. Um, he puts the ring on, slips off to the side. No one notices. Um, I think it says, let's see here. Uh, let's see. They're making, yeah, they were making for the dwarves as fast as they could go. Sick and weary as they were, the king had ordered them to make haste. Suddenly the torches stopped and the hobbit had just time to catch, catch up with them before they had begun to cross the bridge. This was the bridge that led across the river to the king's doors. Um, and so here's where you get Bilbo kind of sneaking in and out of this bridge door, uh, and we yeah. see that in the we see that in the film. I actually think that the the film did a really good job of capturing what this is like and what it seems like, other than yeah, you know, uh, Tariel and and uh, oh. Thor and not being in the innermost cell, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> you, you know what I mean. I mean, yeah, really, no, what, was, I, no. what were the major differences? I mean, it seems like that was those were two yeah, of no, the, the biggest. And then, obviously, the presence of Legolas in the movie, which, you know, it's understandable. Yeah. You, you want to get Orlando Bloom back in there. He's a character that ties back to the trilogy. It's cool to see Legolas again. He he would have presumably been present, you know what I mean, even though Tolkien hadn't developed him yet. Um, okay, so I, one more back to the how the length of time. I guess there's a couple sources. This is from Reddit, so excuse me. Uh, you and I are both... <laughs> <laughs> we're we're uh, referencing Reddit back to back episodes, but someone named um, Karen Fonstad, who probably a lot of people are going to know, Atlas of Middle Earth, uh, other sites, uh, Lalith's Middle Earth science pages, Douglas Wilhelm's Harder's chronology and the timeline of the Hobbit, say it was closer to approximately two months. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean that yeah. makes sense. It, long enough to lose track of time, but not so long that it's like like it's like obviously not to, you know. Not years later, where they're gonna miss the the proper moon or whatever. So, sure. um, yeah, no, I I feel like the, the film did a great job of representing uh, what 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 we read uh, in this chapter of of uh, of the kingdom. Um, yeah, did you did you know the kingdom's name? I had to look this up, dude. Uh, uh and I don't know. I don't even know if this is legit. Um, 
I have to look it up again. Uh, you mean the, the like 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 um, yeah? Because I just kept looking. I'm like a uh, Merkwood Woodland Realm or something. Sure. Um, sure. Okay, maybe that wasn't true. I found the name Venegoth, and I don't know if that's hmm. legit or if that's maybe a fan name. Maybe that's a fan name. Never mind. Well, it is Never interesting there's, that there's not there's like no actual... there's like yeah it's just the woodland realm I guess uh, yeah because because it, it's nice that we have like um, like yeah, Lothlorien it, is yeah. the city uh, you know the, or the kingdom the, the where they live in Lorien sure um, Rivendell Rivendell is the yeah the name of the place you know um, It'd be nice to have that for for a place yeah. like this yeah because I kept I kept looking it up and I'm like what do I call this like the Merkwood kingdom like what is what's thranduil's pad like a palace what, what, what well, is this called i don't know what, what this I'm is called here's what i'm gonna call it. i'm yeah. gonna call it the uh <laughs> the palace of berries and red leaves i mean like it's <laughs> it's like this the the, the, I, the here's something interesting so we yeah. eventually meet the elven king and we've met him before yes. uh just just briefly but like he's on his his chair carving of wood mm-hmm. and on his head is a crown of berries and red leaves for yeah. the autumn was come again yeah. Um, interestingly here, just a tidbit, why throw in this extra sentence? But in the spring, he wore a crown of woodland flowers in the his dude hand. is fashionable, right? Oh, is that what he's, it is? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's fashionable. He's, he's into how he looks. He mimics the, the seasons around him. I don't know. Like that's, that's why, as you're saying it now, I'm thinking that's gotta be why he's, he's a fancy elf. He's fancy. He's well dressed. He's GQ. He's elf King GQ. Oh, dude! Like I he's mean, he's going for a cover. Like he wants to be on the cover of Middle Earth GQ for sure, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. He, he 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 wants people going. What is Thranduil wearing this fall? Oh, we've right. got to go. <laughs> We're going with that. Strapless, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. What's well, in the crown this season? Mm. All right. Which kind of berries are we using? Um, like like I would be looking them up, going, okay, what do I need to mimic here? Okay. All right. Cool. 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 Autumn well, leaves in the crown. I'm being staff. Serious. I'm being serious here. I'm guessing there's yeah. a certain type of autumn berry here, but like crown of berries. We talking strawberries, blueberries, raspberries? What are we talking Ding- here? You know, uh, just bunch Ding- of. Uh, is it assortment? You know, who knows? Dingleberries, um, or I don't know. You know, who knows? <laughs> Chimney Christmas, um, possibly, but but it, yeah, it, I think it's he's 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 a fella to be reckoned with, and. Uh, <laughs> Boy, he had. There's some contention between him and these dwarves, and they, big time. There's, there's no, um, there's some animosity between them. You can sense yeah. that. You can feel that. Oh, one thing I wanted to say. You're talking about the fashion, and you're talking about all these different things. As we drive forward in this chapter, there's a huge. They have like balls and kind of like, like a feast and celebrations. Yeah. They're they're fond of wine. That's the whole thing. As as we get out yeah. of here. Um, so. He was he. There was a lot of contention, but he was also um, he also did treat them with a sense of what? What did he say? Jeez. Uh, um, oh well, he 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 unbinds them, which is a is a sort of kindness. Yeah. Um, even though he said there's nowhere to escape, you can't escape once you're brought inside my realm. So it is also kind of a, a bit of a flex. Uh, I thought there was more than that. Oh my gosh, man. I'm misremembering all kinds of stuff. I'm just going to let you talk. Well, I guess maybe the point is, is he was, it almost was like he was kind of civil until Balin says, you know, what, what crime did we commit? Were those your spiders that we killed? Balin gives him right. a little bit. Oh of, yes, he does. Yes, a little does. bit of like, um, what was our, where, you know, is it a crime to walk in the forest? And Thranduil says, actually, yeah, if you go in my realm unbidden, right, it is a crime. So right. why don't you go in these cells until you can learn your manners? Right. It's almost like if they would have, I almost wonder if they would have come in with a different attitude. I mean, they would have obviously still probably been kept captive, but maybe they could have. I don't know what what would I mean what would have what do you think would have happened like would it have changed their outcome at all or was this all just formality and he was gonna put them in the no I think anyway I think it would have changed I think I think things would have changed I think yeah I think people are bound to kind of like their word and giving oaths and things like that so had they have said hey we're gonna give you we're gonna cut you in on this move us along on our way because the idea is I think this king would say 
the odds of them getting that back from smog are are small but you know what yeah. give it a try fellas and if you yeah. do though i want you bound by oath bound by oath that i get a share yeah. of that treasure i think that might have happened and that's sort of what thorin struggles with which is like he's, yes, he's later considering on. Yep. it yeah yeah so i don't know that's the only thing i can really think of yeah. I don't think he would have just said, hey, let me help you. And I don't want anything from you guys. It seemed like there were right, some, right. some jewels that were at stake that were yes, possibly, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's he's got to get his, his winter wardrobe prepared. He probably needs some some fancy, you know, diamonds or something or something snow related. You know, he's a he's a fancy elf. He's stylish. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, OK, we, you, that's that's a cool experience. Um, just just meeting him. <laughs> I mean, really, I don't know. Like, you know, it's, it's, I thought the show did a great, I thought the movie did a great oh, it was job. Awesome. I, yeah. I loved that. I was shocked by that. So, well, even, um, even like, um, even if you think about like the, the way Lee Pace, and I'm not a huge fan of Thranduil, like Thranduil is cool, but I would never, sure. I would never get into Thranduil. You know what I mean? As like one of the my fire favorite. Drake situation though, showing your face. Yeah, that was cool. That, that was, was cool. cool. But, but I love the, and Lee Pace is a really good actor. I think, um, I mean, obviously, <laughs> he should put that on his next resume. Lane Smith says I'm a great actor, uh, <laughs> but um, like even the way he kind of s- like s- uh, the way he sits in that chair in, in his throne, uh, like I just have images of him sort of like he's his hands are up high and he's sort of slouched over and very relaxed. Not how you're used to seeing like a king on a throne. Um, it is this very like fashionable. Um, uh, fond of wine, more laid back type of elf. Yeah, which it, which like you said, to your point, is so different from other elves that we have we, we meet later on in in Middle Earth. Yeah, there's like a yeah. casualness to to him or something like. Uh, yeah. and that's why I said like even the the like like parties and stuff. It that, that just seems kind of he's more informal. More, he's he's more informal. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah basically. Um, Maybe even yeah. more vain. You think he's he's definitely oh, more vain absolutely, than, absolutely. Than, than other elves. I think so. Um, yeah, I think th- I think they're tied up in their own affairs versus the th- yeah. the affairs of of Middle Earth. It seems like, although right, it's right. wild. That's why it's such a good a good jab by Balin to say, "What about the spiders, man?" Yeah, yeah. You know, like we almost got yeah. killed out there. <laughs> like, yeah, you guys aren't tending that forest very well. Like, if yeah. this is your realm, I mean, things are bad. Things are bad yeah. out there. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's jump into Mr. Mr. Baggins here a little bit though. So, cause you yep. said, you know, it's, it, it was a weary long time that he had lived in that place all alone and always in hiding, never daring to take off the ring, hardly daring to sleep, even tucked away in the darkest and remotest corners he could find for something to do. He took to wandering about the Elven King's palace. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's crazy. It seems it made that to me makes it seem like, okay, two months, like, Okay yeah maybe longer i mean it just seems like he lived yeah. there for, for a time that was that was kind of significant it just this felt like such a long time he's moving around he's checking up on things when they would go out into the forest he would go mm-hmm. with them he was actually trying to find a path right yeah. he's trying to find the old path yes he's probing um, essentially he's probing to see where they could Right. Like, are there any escape routes? Is there any way that even if I got them out of the cells, any place I could take them where we could leave this place? Yep. You know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And he would go out there and he would get like, they would be hunting and stuff and he would just not even be able to kind of Couldn't catch up. up. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, this is a nice little picture in my book here. The Elven King's Gate. Yeah. Isn't oh, that cool? Wow. That yeah. is actually really cool. Yep. Yep. Huh. I, l- I love Tolkien's. Video. Yeah. Tolkien's il- illustrations are just beautiful. Yeah, wow. Oh, s- not- speaking of illustrations, I wanted to give a shout out, not give a shout out, but some of you probably know about this, but it's the Hobbit uh, uh, illustrated version by uh, Jemima, Jemima uh, Catlin. She's a British illustrator. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, dude. Uh, I was telling you that there's like, oh man, like probably 15 to 20 illustri- like small illustrations for just this chapter. It's awesome. That's actually cool. Yeah, I, I I like because I'm kind of a visual guy. I mean, I, I like to. Oh, there we go. That's cool. Well, there's the there's the. I uh, where's the berries? I see the leaves. I don't see the berries in the in the crowd. They're there. 
They're there. Oh, they? Okay, okay, okay. They're small berries. They look like uh, they look like blackberries or something. Or are they elderberries? What are elderberries? They're elderberries. Like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just beautiful. So anyway, very cool. I don't. I, it's not abridged. Um, and there's huh. just all kinds of great. There you go. There's Mr. Baggins there. Go check it there out. It's awesome. Is. We got uh, Sarah got it for the girls, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna open this up and look in here and just check out these illustrations. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, all right. Well, well, Mr. Baggins, you know, he, he's, he's a burglar and he's trying to live yep. up to this name. He's trying to kind of sniff around here. Never forget the sniffing. And, never. uh, <laughs> he's trying never, to figure ever. out what to do. Uh, wh where should he, wh what should he do? He often wished yeah. too, that he could get a message for help sent to Hand the off. wizard. Yep. Right. But yep. that of course was quite impossible. And he soon realized, uh, that if anything was to be done, it would have to be done by Mr. Baggins mm -hmm. alone and unaided it's which is dude, him. yeah i read that i read that and i put a huge exclamation point by it because like just as human beings we rely on each other you know what i mean sure. whether it's in our job or at home or something like that and it, that is a it's a both uh like frightening and um exhilarating feeling to know that uh this is all up to me ain't, ain't no help coming my way even if I wanted it, I'm on my own. If I want this thing done, I got to do it, right? It's, right? it's such a mixture of emotions. You're like, I don't know if I can. There's no way. This is impossible. Mixed with, maybe I can do this. Maybe I'm up to the task. Maybe this isn't going to be a problem. Maybe I can do something great and unexpected. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that uh, Mr. Baggins is definitely because he doesn't give up. If he gave up, he wouldn't feel any kind of sense of, you know what? Maybe I can do this. Maybe the wizard sure. was right. Maybe there is something in me. I've gotten us this far. I got us through the forest like I, I saved everyone from the spiders. That was. Yes, he did. Huge. That was huge. And there was no wizard there either. So I, I wonder, I wonder, I mean, obviously we don't explore the inner workings of Bilbo's thought process, but that's got to be part of it too. The mixture of going like, the, you know what, this is just impossible. This is just yeah. impossible with, I, I got us, I got us through a pretty massive test not that long ago. You know, at least it's not spiders and at <laughs> least I got my ring and maybe there's a way out and maybe I can find it. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, so like like weeks or weeks go by. A week or two of this sneaking uh, sort of life, watching, following the guards. So he's kind of taking in what's going on in this place. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, what was a surprise? One day uh, he overheard some dwarfs talking, and he learned that another dwarf was there imprisoned, and yeah. that just happens to be Thorin. So he decides to go and visit Thorin and give him a bit of encouragement. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he secretly goes to Thorin and he sends him a message like through the keyhole. Right. He's just yeah. speaking. And actually, when Thorin first hears it, he doesn't even realize that it's Bil that's Bilbo. He thinks like, ah, it's my imagination. I've been here. Yeah. It just makes it seem like it's longer. And I keep saying that I'm d I'm fine if it's two months. But yeah, yeah, yeah. but like Thorin. Thorin might have even have been there for three or four. I don't know. Maybe well, three. Isn't that the know. beauty of, of Tolkien not actually telling us is we can just imagine because they they wouldn't yeah. know. They they wouldn't necessarily know, especially in the moment. So it's like we're there with them. Time has gone by and a lot of time, but we don't even know how much. I love, too, that this is like Thorin was, it says here, Thorin was too wretched to be angry any longer at his misfortunes and was even beginning to think of telling the king all about his treasure and his quest, which shows how low-spirited he had become. We've, we have not seen Thorin like this, no, not even rem remotely, uh, no. on this quest. And it's the voice of little Bilbo Baggins that saves Thorin. I, I was thinking about this. I wrote off in the margin, like, what would have happened had Bilbo not met him, found him, in that moment had not spoken to him and just oh, yeah. the sound just the sound of his voice giving him hope and renewing his because it, it says after that like he bilbo goes and tells the other um you know tells the other dwarves that thorn is there and 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 thorn puts full trust in bilbo and says Spread like the word Ganda, 
Yeah, like if if Gandalf, bel- it's kind of how I feel with you right now, quite honestly. <laughs> yeah. Quite honestly, it's like you know what? If Bilbo believed in, or sorry, if if Gandalf believed in this in this little burglar and Mister Baggins, Mister Invisible Baggins, then right. then who am I to not spread right. the word? Like you said, spread the word, and uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna crack. But he was so close, like he was so close. Yes. Like I almost think another a few few hours pass by, and he calls for the guards and says, "Take me to the king. I'm ready to tell him everything I know." And it's just the timing. Again, it's the timing that, that Tolkien, like, uh, you know, we saw it so much in Lord of the Rings, right? Where, and even characters grappling with, am I waiting too long? Uh, have I, have I, am I not waiting long enough? You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like, yeah. what, when do I act? When do I wait? When am I patient? When am I silent? When do I speak? All these different, uh, uh, I don't know, like uh, struggles that we all have. Like when, when sure. is the time for action? When is the time to, to be patient? And we just see this timing again of, of Thorin's ready to give it all up, has no idea. He thinks he's there alone, has, probably assumes that everyone else is dead at this point. He probably yeah. thinks they're either dead or they're lost somewhere and never coming back. Yeah. I'm just going to, I'm going to tell him in hopes of maybe getting some help from them and splitting the treasure or I don't know. I don't know what he hoped to get well, out of it. Maybe just to yeah. be released. Get out there and find them too. I mean, that's, that, yeah. that's his people. Yeah. I think even at that point he's thinking, I just need out of here to find my people and see if they're yeah. safe because like I might've been captured and saved. They're dead They're, they're I need to get out. I mean, who yeah. knows? Yeah. That, yeah that had to have crossed. That might've been one of the, that's actually, I like that thought because you know, the more I thought about it, I'm like, okay, if he knows everyone's imprisoned and they're all safe, there's less reason to crack, which is what he tells Bilbo, spread the yeah. word. Yeah. yeah. Renew the faith. Like, yep. Yep. keep the secrets, keep them yeah. safe, you know? Yeah, dude. Yeah. So, cause otherwise it's, otherwise it's about his mates, you know, it's about going out and finding everybody and making sure everyone's good. I think maybe that would yeah. be why he would have come forward with, with some of this. Um, okay. here's yeah. something, here's something interesting though. So I'm gonna read this to you. One yeah. invisible ring was a very fine thing. Yeah. But it was yeah. not much good among fourteen. Yeah. Right. Hold the phone. Okay. This is the one right. ring of yeah. power. Yeah. This is the one ring to rule them all. Yeah. With the power of this ring, you could lay you could literally lay a kingdom low. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can do yeah. that. And it's in the hands of Bilbo. And he yeah. thinks to himself, ah, what's this? What? And you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I don't know if they can't access the power, whatever it might be. And I get that this is written later. It's different. The whole thing. I understand that. But I just think it's so ironic that one invisible ring was a fine thing, but not much good among 14. It's just yeah, like, wild. It's wild to yeah. think of the ring. Yeah. So. Yeah. To, yeah. To think of it kind of down. Yeah. Downplayed as opposed to like the entire Lord of the Rings where it's the most important thing in the world. Yeah. yeah, because I mean they can't all wear it at the same time. They can't all be invisible, and so exactly. what's what's the point? Like like so, what are they gonna do? They're gonna like trade it back and forth and like get through unseen. That there's no way. There's no way that they could use that at least in the way that Bilbo assumes it's most useful and everyone's staying invisible, right? Yeah. 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 So. So anyways, he's got to figure out how to use it to, to their advantage. Yeah, the, the best that he can. And the next several paragraphs there, if, if we want to skip ahead. So three, uh, one, two, three paragraphs. It's basically him discovering these barrels coming yeah. in and out yeah. through the water gate. You know, it's, it's the, coming yeah, in. The port un- yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, underground water course that came from the hillside. There was a water gate. Uh, and yeah. there the rocky roof came down close to the surface. And it's explained really well that, like, this mm-hmm. is the other entrance that um, you have the gate come down. No one can get through. And even if they do come through, um, they're going to come into a stony kind of thing where there's trap doors. You can't yeah. really. The doors only open one way. They're going to they're yeah. gonna fall down, have to be open from the inside, that type of thing. So it works out really nicely that these trap mm-hmm. doors are where they unload the barrels and i thought they that looked really cool in the in the film they did a good job yeah, Bilbo tap 
tapping his foot. Yeah, his foot. <laughs> That's so That's hilarious, dude. Like, and Martin Freeman's physical comedy is so good. Oh, it's that they so just, good. Uh, they, like, I'd love to meet him someday. He's such a. He's so cool. Oh, he's it. hilarious, man. He's yeah, he's awesome. Like I know yeah. him, right? I have met him actually. Um, yeah, I got his number related, on my phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I text him. Stop. I text him regularly. Stop it! Stop it! Hey, uh, Martin, how you doing? Come on the pod. Oh, okay. Hey, Marty, let's go, man. Come on, get Come in. On. <laughs> uh, yeah, but like, uh, I love that. I love that they did change that up a little bit, and it wasn't. It wasn't like the in the film. It wasn't the elves releasing them. It was like Bilbo's actual, like physical, uh, especially when he when he um, went through the trap door. It was his own like <laughs> putting his foot down, trying to get it to open, and then he like stood on the right part and slid down and fell into the water. It was it was great. It's a cool again like using the strengths of their of, of the actors and actresses to tell the story in a different way. I I, lo- I love when Peter Jackson does that. Like it's great. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, we do get a little bit here just before we jump into Bilbo uh, putting the plan into action. I'll just say this quickly. You know, the the, the Long Lake and mm-hmm. the, kind of the men of Lake Town being yep. afraid of, of possibly a dragon from the mountain. That was yeah. just a cool reference to where we're going and yeah. the fact that these barrels are connected to that place. So, yes, mm-hmm. you know, that's 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 kind of neat. But yeah, um, and he's trying to find empty barrels so that they can get inside of. And so yeah. uh, he overhears that the barrels that are right there on the landing are empty. They're the ones uh-huh. to go. It's funny, later yeah. on, the elves will check it. They'll say, these are heavy. And yeah, the guy's yeah. drunk. He's waking up. He's like, "Just that's what I laid them out earlier. I get checked them. here. I checked them. them in. Send them on. You know? Drunk elves. Full of, yeah. Mind. So. It's fine. But, uh, yeah. So, so, so for... Uh, Let's see here. Bilbo, for some time, though, he had sat and thought about the water gate and wondered if it could be used for an escape. Uh, the evening meal had been taken to the prisoners. The guards were tramping down uh, the passage, taking the torchlight with him and leaving everything in the darkness. Bilbo heard the king's butler bidding the chief of the <laughs> guards good night. Now come with me, he said, and taste the new wine that had just come in. I shall be hard at work tonight clearing the cellars. So this wine uh, is really potent what do they call it here it's it's from the great gardens of Dor- darwinian darwinian yeah oh wow wow it's a, it's it's a it's a really it makes it, it making the old elves drowsy okay yeah. so yeah they're very drowsy it's meant for the king's table and they're drinking it. it's a cool reference tolkien says they're drinking out of these big cups or big goblets you know, the king and everyone upstairs has it in a little tiny fine glass that you just sip on. and But these guys are down there just chugging it, you know? Chugging I mean? it, dude. They don't uh, even know how to drink it. Yeah, so Darwinian, Darwinian is to the east, almost straight east. Of, okay. Actually, it's like straight east of uh, Roscobel. Okay, so where... The rabbits? Um, yeah, where uh, Radagast makes his home. And it's Holy by smokes. this... It's to, to the west of the Sea of Rune. Okay, okay. So kind of, mm, I mean, if you follow the the river that flows into, I guess I don't know which way it flows, into the Long Lake, it joins with another river that flows from the Iron Hills, and it's kind of in that area. So yeah, like north of Mordor, uh, north of okay. the uh, the Dead Marshes, north northeast. It's a way off, but they yeah. can still grow. They can still grow grapes there. That's all. They got doing. grapes, bro. They got potent grapes. Wow. Wow. It's fertile it's fertile climate, temperate latitude, and close proximity to the Sea of Rune made Darwinian an ideal location for an agrarian society. Its people were descendants of the Edine, and they had close ties to the Northmen of Dale in genealogy as well as Avari elves. Jeez. Known for its wine. Jeez. Oh, it's actually the land of wine. That's what <laughs> that <laughs> okay. it's literally what that means. Dor land in the Sindarin. And the western uh, is Winian of wine. So land of wine. Let's go. All right. Go. I like it. I like it. All right. Um, but yeah, so they're drinking. It. They're getting yeah. drunk, bro. They're, they're getting they're drunk. drunk. They're drunk. All right. Drunk. Uh, so so Bilbo, he, he takes it. He waits. He watches the butler get drunk. Mm-hmm. One passes out. One keeps talking. They, they, they drowse. They, they're, they're drowsy. Pass out. <laughs> Sneaks over. He grabs the keys. Uh, Ballin's the first one he opens up and they're all wanting to know what's the plan. What are we doing? Yeah. Mr. Baggins, yeah. Yeah. you know, he says, just follow me. Good fella. We yeah. ain't got time for this. 
Yeah, All I right. can't explain it to you. Let's can't go. Can't explain. We can't explain. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't realize yet, though, that they would not like this plan. But I like to think no. maybe maybe there's a part of his brain who's like, I'm not explaining it partially because we don't have time, and I don't want to be too loud. But also, I know they're gonna hate this plan. But it's literally the only way out. So I gotta get them there. I and, just and, gotta get them to the door to push them out. Right. Because he right? can leave. We need to remember too that Bilbo could yeah. have left. He could have could've. gone. Um, he decides not to, and that's not even really mentioned like Bilbo doesn't even have a thought you know sometimes like a character will think like oh I could just leave and run away never yeah. thinks that so that, well he, that, and he even says where would I go like where would I even go yeah yeah where, where uh, back back a couple pages ago he says he did not wish to desert the dwarves and indeed he did not know where in the world to go without them right well and I think yeah. the other thing too is even if the even if this first plan doesn't work and it takes another extra three four five months I think he stays yeah. I think Bilbo would oh yeah would see it through I and, agree. and, and I, I just agree. think he's that type of guy so um all right though eventually he gets all all 12 doors out they head down to see Thorin and he says upon my war uh, upon my word said Thorin uh when Bilbo whispered to him he said Gandalf spoke true as usual a pretty fine burglar you make it seems when the time comes I am <laughs> sure we are all forever at your service, whatever happens after this, but what comes next? And as you said, the grumbling takes over, uh, and wow. he's a little bit downcast and upset, but um, he's like, all right, well, come along. Back to your nice cells, then fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll lock yeah. you back up, you know? Yeah. He kind of sounds like, no, like no, Thranduil. No, 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 you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're all like, no, Mr. Bilbo, we're sorry, we're sorry, we're sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, nah, but, but they had much respect for him, though. They definitely had a lot of respect for him. And, uh, he, he, yeah, so, so yeah, uh, let's see. The wine of, of Dorwinian brings deep and pleasant dreams. There would be different expressions on the faces of the chief guard the next day, even though Bilbo yeah. before they went on stole in and kind heartedly put the keys back on the belt. I thought that was interesting yeah. that, that as he sneaks past the guard again, um, and the Butler, he puts the keys back and it's really out of humor to say, Oh, this yeah. would be a doozy, right? Yeah. Like yeah, how there, there they is get that. Out? Yeah, there's that first line that's very uh, Baggins, right? Where it's, this will save him some of the trouble he's in for. It's very polite. It's very mannered. But yeah, the second part is very Tukish. It's like, they're going to think we disappeared without even the keys. This is great. Like you see the two sides, the two sides of his personality and his, and his like bloodline there of the Baggins followed by the Tuk. Which is yeah. what what this story does. It goes from the Baggins more and more and more to the Tukish side, which is exactly what Gandalf was was hoping for in the first place. But well, I yeah. think we all have that in us. You know, I think yeah. sometimes you, yeah. you're like, wow, when, remember that time when I was really adventurous or I did this thing, and and yeah, um, yeah I think I think we a lot of us can connect with that. And Bilbo is it's cool to see him kind of yeah. draw upon those two sides. So yep. Uh, all right. So yeah. They have to disappear. Um, mm -hmm. They have they have to get through here, and the, the, he's hoping it's it's some very strong that they'll think it's very strong magic uh, that caused the dwarves to, to to get out. Now he packs them in these barrels. As I think it's easy enough to say, like he just puts them in here. They're supposed mm -hmm. to be stuffed with, or they were stuffed with, um, you know, butter, apples, all sorts of things, you know. And uh, but they get in the barrels. Uh, the attention to detail is ridiculous, right? They're worried about yeah. being bounced around a little bit, so it's even like yeah. he put straw in, he padded them well. You know, yeah. good packaging, good packaging. Yeah. So Tolkien was all about making sure stuff was mailed safely. You know, <laughs> uh, well, they, the bubble they, wrap. You think of, the bubble wrap, the bubble wrap, dude. Because they have no idea what kind of uh, they don't know what this what this river is going to be like. They don't know if there's going to be if it's going to be you know a calm, nice little stream or uh, rapids and if they're going to be bashing into each other and it's something that like you see Bilbo hadn't even thought of right it's something he's planning last second so we see him this reminds me honestly of when he's back in uh bag end and kind of flustered and rushing around to help accommodate the dwarves as they're eating here he is like rushing around last second and uh, eventually we get the the last lid is put on like just in in the nick of time because he's yes. had to plug holes he's had to stuff with straw right and then make sure all the lids are on nice and tight and we yep. see that you know i love how tolkien says it too i think it's later on but he says of course you know like you may have noticed that already but he hadn't until now although you wouldn't have done as you know you wouldn't have done any better but didn't have a barrel for himself 
Mm-hmm. So Wild. he's got to figure out what to do about himself, right? Wild. Like, and they're st- and that we got we got uh, they're they're coming down to wake up Galleon, the old butler, right? Yes. And and uh, and you know trying to get these um, these barrels to where they need to be. They're all drunk though. They're they all are drunk. They are. They come down from the feast and and basically. <laughs> I love how he wakes up and he's sort of like he he tries to play it off like he's not drunk and they're like seriously, we've been through this before, you know. <laughs> it's kind of like that time when when Lane, you know, he's like it's time to podcast as uh, we've been the, here before. Where's the Zoom? I gotta move my cans. Where's let me move my can. Let me move my cans. Just too many white claws. Man. Too many cans. Oh my! Get gosh. your claws off my mic, buddy. Is um, wow. Something Where, else. Where's Where's Ben when you need him? Oh, <laughs> <gosh>. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh man. but but no, they're having a good time. It seems like it's a good party up there, honestly. And oh, you know, absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're having a good time. But they they came down to for business. And they're they're moving the barrels out, uh, and he orders them around. Um, get on with the work. Grow the butler. There is uh, nothing in the feeling of weight. And the idol toss pots arms. These yeah. are the ones to go and no others. Do as I say. It just, don't they just kind of sound more like men? It sounds like men bantering than we ever hear like elves kind of talking to each other. Like toss pot? Yeah. It's like a swear for an elf, isn't it? Like that's it's crazy. Yeah. 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 It's it, just it, not. Yeah. It's yeah. different lingo. And even even there. Yeah. So is this is this I think this is their song, right? So they said yeah. they're, as they're rolling these barrels out, it's like roll 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 i mean really yeah the first line i know i know it's that's like, it it's such roll, it's such a roll drop. <laughs> roll 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 rolling down the hole heave ho splash plump down they go down they bump like come on guys can we come up with something a little bit like roll roll what else you got what, what's in there but there no it's they're How can inebriated. you make that more epic, or is it more cheerful? Epic? What do we need? Like, no, dude. I think that it's a drunken. It's like, it's a, it's an inebriation, a song of inebriation, man. Yeah. And they're and they're trying to do work at the same time, and I mean they're probably like slobbering. Roll, 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 rolling down the hole. Heave ho, splash, plump. Down they go. Down they bump. Like they're just it's they're wild. wasted. It's wild. It's not. It's not eloquent. It's not pretty. It's not even. It's not even comparable to like I'm thinking of another Elvin song we heard when they're coming into Rivendell, right? Oh yeah, exa- yeah, yeah. Which yeah. was a little, which was a little more playful and a little more like they seemed like higher beings. The these songs and even the the longer the longer one we get into on the next page, like. They're just explaining where the barrels are gonna go. Like that's li- that's literally what they're doing. I'm like, okay, so it's a narrative device, I guess, because it's giving us a it's it's telling us what this ride's gonna be like without having to show us later. But it's just like Dude. so Dude. so boring. It's like the most boring. Okay, can I be honest? Hold on, this is the yes. most boring song we've run into so far ever, ever. But ever, you know what though? I, I don't the- even want to sing it. Hold on, hold on. I actually thought about yeah. this though. I the the roll roll part first, right? So I read that and I read it as I said, you know, what, how can I make this more interesting? Let's go back to uh, far over the Mr. Far over the Misty Mountain. <laughs> far over. Roll, 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 roll. <laughs> Dude, and I so you go epic and I was thinking like I, my mind went to roll, roll, roll your barrel gently down, down the stream. The stream. <laughs> thranduil, uh, thranduil, 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 Thranduil. Wants wine is wine is every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a, yeah. Um, oh wow. Well. Okay. Yeah. So, so they're singing in the barrels. They're they're moving them down. All, all that good stuff is going on. Uh, as you said, there's another this other song which you said just down the river the swift the down the swift dark streams you go yeah. back to the lands you once did know. How yeah. I mean, you got a tune for that one? Cool. I don't really know. I, I mean, I don't like again. It's so boring. I don't even want. To, I mean, I'm not. If this is someone's favorite song, I'm so sorry. Someone, uh, please send us in a version of this. Like we're we're willing to. We will insert. I don't even. You know. I mean, because so, yes, please, please. That'd be awesome. Uh, I, mi- I actually missed getting those. Um, we had so many in in uh, especially like the fellowship because I guess there was more song. Remember, there's so many songs at the beginning. Yeah. Of Lord of the Rings, and we had so many people send us songs. I would love to 
So to get here, more of those. Here we go. We'll just do the first two lines. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of think through this. So down the swift dark swift, stream dark you go, stream you go back, back to the back lands, to lands you <laughs> once did, did know. know. I don't, right? Leave like the that. halls and caverns deep. Leave the northern mountains steep. Where the forest wide and dim, stoops and shadows gray and grim, float yep. beyond the world of trees, out into the whispering bees. Bees <laughs> breeze past, <laughs> past the rushes, past the reed, over the hill and through the woods to grandmother's <laughs> house. We go. We I go. guess just like, yeah. okay, cool. I mean, yeah. I guess, I don't know, like, what would you sing if you were, I okay, I just. No, 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 no wait, 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 <laughs> Lane, wait, we are drunk. Let's 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 toast here, right? We have a little right. toast. We're the elves, right? Bro, mm -hmm. I'm not. I wish I was drunk. So then so you should just say. Let this. me do it for you. Okay. All right. If this were me, and I'm sending off these sacred barrels, but what are you going to be with, singing about? Are you going to be singing about friend, okay, okay sacred cargo? The okay. butler is there. I think of sacred scenes where, as if this is the these barrels are about to <laughs> to depart from the gray havens. Oh my All gosh. right, down. Th this is a sacred moment. They gather. They have a moment yeah. of silence before they start. Yeah, moment right. I don't. Please, 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 please. A moment of silence. A moment of silence. Okay. Down the swift dark stream. <laughs> Like I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking. Like if I'm drunk and oh, and, and and throwing barrels in, I'm like barrel, 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 throwing it in the water. This one's heavy. This one's light. I don't know, dude. What do you think? Like I'm not singing a coherent song. But you know me though, right? You you know me, and and I would be the guy yeah. who was just like I would take it to a level of epicness that is just like these yeah. barrels are the def like. With if we don't send these, like it's over. The battle's over. lost. You know, There's like no more wine. Everything yeah. depends on this. Oh, it's just great. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We are really digressing oh, there, but it's hilarious. Anyway, um, it's just it's an odd song. I almost think like uh, he uh, he honestly, I think he did that so he could explain where explain they're going. where they're going because. He's gonna be busy explaining the trouble that sure. they're having, and maybe sure. because like the dwarves are in the dark, and so they wouldn't see it. And and Bilbo's the only one on the outside, and he can't even he's having trouble riding his barrel, sure. so he he wouldn't notice either. But that maybe maybe also to convey that it's not like a short trip either, like it's a long, like this is a this is a pretty cool system they have set up. This this barrel system. I mean, like it's it's epic, dude. Like it's it's yeah. impressive that they're able to, I don't know, figure this trade system out. I don't know. It's yeah, interesting. No, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's cool. It's cool. Uh, Bilbo, he, hey, he grabs onto the edge of the barrel. Boom! Uh, down to the water, he fell. Splash into the cold, dark water with a barrel yep. on top of him. So he's he's good to go. Um. Now this part, I don't know, my friend. So, yeah, I I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. Um, as was kind of stumbling in the dark before we started this podcast, uh -huh. and and uh, this this last little bit, you have to bear with me here. But, but you want me to? Do you want me to? You want me to play you, and you can be me. I abs absolutely. I mean, I'll I do just, that if you want. From what I remember, because yeah, I read not it much long, happens. But I mean. yeah, it's we're only a page. We're only a page away here. Yeah. Um, but like. You know, we're, we're headed down and we're bobbing up and down. Everything that Bilbo kind of thought was going to happen, you know, plugging all the holes, making sure they're not yeah. getting water's getting in, all that kind of stuff, hearing voices, figuring out where everyone's at. That's that's sort of the, the thing. It's it's the it's the peril of being in a barrel. Look out. I'm t I am, uh, we are transitioning roles here. OK, let barrel, me just barrel. take over on the peril barrel situation. OK. okay. All right. Get right. us on a tangent. The okay, bobbing and, and the back. bumping. The bobbing and the bumping. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> wow. The Jostle. Do you want to play name game again? Or no, I, I don't. I, I, if we were playing name game right now, they, these would not be appropriate names. Um, <laughs> so, anyways. <laughs> anyways. Uh, but, yeah. So, so, that's what happens. We're, we're moving down and we're thinking about that. Um, 
Out they went under the overhanging branches of the trees on either bank. Bilbo wondered what the dwarves were feeling and whether a lot of water was getting into the tubs. Some, yeah. uh, so, some of those that bobbed along by him in the gloom seemed pretty low in the water, and he guessed that, that these dwarves, uh, that these had dwarves inside of them. Yeah. So, yep. and he's thinking about the lids, as you said. Are they on tight enough? Did I do a good job? Attention yep. to detail. It's a big deal. Yep. So, and he's 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 thinking like I'm responsible in a way of whether all 13 make it or not. Sure, like this sure. is kind of kind of on my head a little bit, and sure, you know, he's free, he's freezing cold. the The water is 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 icy, and he wonders if he's gonna die before his luck turns. Um, and and wondering how much longer he can hang on, and like he wasn't prepared sure. for this. It wasn't like he was working up his strength and even his mental like train of thought to go okay i'm gonna be hanging on to a barrel in a raging icy river yeah and you know it might maybe for hours maybe for a couple i don't know like he didn't know what to expect so he was literally just taking a jump a desperate jump in the dark to hang on to one of these but yeah. um it's before... probably a good thing hey, it's probably a good thing that he didn't think that through Oh yeah, because yeah. It's almost you, like the adrenaline. The adrenaline yeah. kicked in, and he is able to. Yeah, but thankfully, Petrified. before long, yeah, it's just like he's like, I got, I have to do it, or I'm gonna die. Um, there's kind of like this little uh, eddy in the current that um, brings some of the barrels close to shore, and it just really what it does, it gives Bilbo a, a chance to like readjust, and he's able yes, to yes, kind of like right. try to like sit sit up on top of this barrel. I love all the comparisons to him looking like a drowned rat. I think it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, three or four different uh, like rat references. So he was a rabbit before. Now he's a he's a wet rat. Right, right. Um, <laughs> he kind of uses other barrels to brace himself, and then gets up on top and gets his balance as best he can. Um, and you know, he even says like the breeze is cold, but it's better than the water. And then they they sort of like uh, spur out of this eddy, and they break break free and continue down uh, the the river. But he. he you know, like being on top is terribly uncomfortable. Um, you know, thankfully he's, uh, he's, you know, he's a hobbit. So he's very light. Um, and the barrel he was on was a big one. So it, he actually lucked out, lucked out yeah. pretty well. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's he, like, he said it was like riding a, a round bellied pony that wanted to kept that wanted to keep, uh, you know, taking a roll in the grass. So yeah. just not not a good, not a comfortable ride for Mr. Baggins. You have to wonder, was it worse being a dwarf in a barrel or Bilbo on top trying to yeah. ride a barrel? You know, you actually, know? I, as I was thinking about him packing them in, really you would want good packing so you're not banging around and, you know, bumping yeah. oh, and yeah. everything. So, I mean, maybe they did have it a bit easier and, and his, his ride was a bit, uh, you know, tougher. He does yeah. eventually get to dry land, though. I mean, right, yeah, he the, eventually kind of... Yeah. He, they he come gets to this, there, right? Yeah, they come to this bank, and it's there. Like all the uh, barrels are pulled and pushed together, and these are the people who are catching them. Yeah, right. Um, I couldn't tell. These are men, right? Yeah. Are these men? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. I didn't think there was a group of elves. They're men who live in this little village, um, and Bilbo is able to kind of like scutter off uh, and try to suppress his sneezing. And, uh, eventually though, it gives him up. He, he thinks maybe I can get close enough to the fire and grab some, grab some dinner, you know, steal, steal some food, which he had grown accustomed to like, you know, that he it's true. I think Tolkien even talks about it, it's true hunger that, that drives him, not just, uh, gosh, what did he do? He compared it to like, um, uh, yeah. He, he knew now only too well what it was like to be really hungry, not merely politely interested in the dainties of a well-filled larder. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he tries to get close to the campfires. He tries to tries to get food, but his his sneezing gives him up. And he ends up like grabbing a loaf and a bottle of wine and a pie that did not belong to him and running off into the, the woods and uh, is able to get some sleep. Even though it's chilly and cold, he finds some dry sure. leaves to kind of doze on. And he, we cut away to him waking, a, waking up, and it's his own sneezing that wakes him up. And there's a racket down by the river. And you got to think the whole time the dwarves are just stuck in the barrels. <laughs> like overnight in the water, they're probably damp, right? Bilbo's the only one who gets this little bit of rest. And, uh, you know, we hear the, uh, 
the the ruck is down by the the stream and they're getting ready to go off to lake town uh they're kind of roping all the barrels together and they're going to get on them and kind of like you know use a a, a pole to push themselves and wrap their way down sure. to, to lake town um and they're they, they're they, you know they're they, they comment on the heaviness, right? They're like, yeah, they they're grumbling say, about how, yeah, they're grumbling about how heavy it is. And they're like, if this would have, if we would have gotten these instead of last night during the day, we would have opened them to see if they were full because they feel like they're full and it, right. they, they were sent here by mistake. So again, yeah. the timing, the timing of everything working in their favor, if they would have arrived during the day, they're found out and maybe it's a different story. Sure. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, they get, they make their way down towards the lake. Um, they had that's it. The I mean, yeah, that's yeah. They escaped the dungeons, but um, are all of them alive? We don't really, we don't really know. So, kind of a little cliffhanger from, yeah, from from the professor. Yeah, out of out, yeah, bar- barrels out of bond. Barrels out uh, of bond. James Bond out of out of James Bond. I did not see. I did. Well, I almost made a really bad reference right there. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, as, well, as has got to silence himself sometimes. Um. Anyways, yeah. No, it's cool. I, I'll tell you. Remind me to tell you after the podcast. You know, yeah, after absolutely. hours. All right. Uh, yes. It's just a James Bond reference. Don't worry. And yeah, <laughs> Tario. All right. Um. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Lane's now curious. So I can't wait. I can't cool. Wait. It's yeah. That that that's a cool chapter. And it it's it just sort of to me. I was thinking, yeah, like I mean, this is. Uh, that's why I like Bilbo. You know, I, I've, yeah. I, when I said it, the whole time we were doing the Lord of the Rings, I really like Bilbo. I like what he goes through. And I just, I always, when I, growing up, when I had first read The Hobbit, I was like, this is my guy. Yeah. You know, he does some cool yeah. stuff. They doubt him, but he comes back and he's just good. And he's, you know, he's solid. Um, yeah. Even though he's got the ring and that's, 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 that's cool. But he also has extra powers too. I, I yeah. never forgot as a kid. I never, ever, ever forgot the line, anytime they referenced extra powers or magic, you know, I always thought it was cool. And even in this chapter, when they talk about, you know, the idea that maybe the elves would think that, you know, the dwarves had gotten out by some other magic, not by keys, yeah. but yeah. by some magic. And you're like, OK, yeah. that leads you to believe there are magic is very real and alive in this world. Never forget that it, it sometimes yeah. is not it's not abrupt and in your face all the time, but it's there. For sure, and he's kind of he's kind of like building his own legend too, in a way. Yeah, like later on we'll see him, uh, you know, like when he's talking to Smog. I am I am rid. Oh, jeez, what is it? Ring winner and barrel rider and all these different yes. names he gives himself, right? And it's like there is that poetic side to him that, like, uh, you know, he he's he is a writer, right? And Yep. In a lot of ways, he's a lot like Tolkien, and he's he's kind of building this. I love too that the end of this chapter, right? Uh, Tolkien says that now, after all these like kind of misadventures and uh, like unfortunate accidents along this quest, that we are beginning into this is the beginning of the final adventure. Like it's almost like we're getting into like the final act in a way. Like we're we're pretty much you know Tolkien saying that the dragon is next. So hang on, yep. here we go. Here we go. And you can almost you can imagine him reading this to his children, right? And they're thinking like, "What about the dragon, Dad? Like, sure, come on. Like, when are we are we smog? Are we even gonna get to smog?" And he's like, "Just hold on, it's right. coming. Here we it's are." Coming. So very cool. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow! All right, man. That that is cool. Good chapter. Yeah. The next couple of chapters are kind of um, shorter, like that. We'll have another big chapter yeah. later on once we get to the Lonely Mountain, but um. Yeah, but this is good. This will be. This feels good. I like the lightness of the Hobbit. I I really like it. I think it's yeah. it's it's fun. It's been good for me and you. So now yeah, my, I think we are ready. Are we ready to jump into some some? Uh, yeah. What, do, do you have something? What do you got? Bywater post. We got something coming up here. What's going on? Yeah, I think we, think? we have two. Uh, is it two? Yeah, two we got to read two or three. Uh, two okay. actually. Uh, uh, one. Um, we kind of have from the same same person just to kind of follow up. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yep. best part of, of every episode. Here it is. Um, you want the first one? You want the second one? What do you want to do? Uh, I was going to do the second one if you don't mind. Okay, I yeah. Pulled this one. Yeah, doesn't matter either way. But yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay, here we go. Hello, Ez, Lane, and all the lovely uppers out there in this wide world. I should say who this is from. This is from Fiona Brady. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I am currently writing this email on International Hobbits Day. That just shows how far behind we are. Yes, we, yeah, we're behind. <laughs> though, though being a mother of a two-year-old, I doubt it will be sent today. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And uh, it wasn't read today either. So, and I am, well, it's read today, but it wasn't, you know, that. Uh, and yeah. I am sitting at my desk in my temporary home office just outside Glasgow and sunny Scotland. As I have, I think I've read this one. Did she send a picture of her view? Uh, I believe I, Fiona I, sent I, us a picture of her view. Yeah, I think so. And, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I, think, I think I read this too because the, uh, the intrigue of Scotland got me. Yes. You know, and so, yeah. but we had, her I, don't, view, I, don't, I don't think we've, Read it here, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe yeah. she just describes it. I think maybe she just describes her view. Uh, I have a sure. great view of the uh, Campsy Hills, and the trees outside my window are starting to turn gold and red as autumn has set in. I have always thought of my home as being in the Shire, but today I am feeling it's more La Florian. Beautiful. My Tolkien story starts, like most, with the films. I was 19 back in 2001, and my boyfriend at the time suggested we go and see the fellowship in the cinema. I said, okay, but really only to pass the time. Well, within the first 20 minutes, I was mesmerized, and I came out of that film a new person. I will never forget that feeling of awe, and within two weeks, I had read the books cover to cover. I was in love with Middle Earth. I then went to read The Hobbit and the Silmarillion to feed my habit. The boyfriend who introduced me to Tolkien didn't stick around long enough to accompany me to the two towers, but by that time, my family had all become fans, so we booked out a full row of the cinema, a tradition we continued right to the third, uh, we continued right up to the third Hobbit film. I remember feeling a gut-wrenching loss when Return of the King ended, yeah, as I thought that, as I thought that was it. I almost felt like I was part of the story, if that makes sense, and it was coming to a close. Absolutely. I remember being upset. I remember my first, sure. uh, like, first watching Return of the King in the theater, and I was disappointed. Yeah. And I think it was just because yeah. it, was, it, was, it was over, and I was, like, a freshman in high school, and so I had all this anticipation and, and, and uh, expectation, and I was just like, man, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. So I yeah. remember feeling that way. It, it was kind of a bittersweet, almost uh, left me kind of, yeah, it, weird, weird, it's weird. It didn't leave me feeling the way like the fellowship did. You know what I mean? So yeah. I can, uh, I can understand what she's talking about. But then the extended versions came out with their hidden scenes and appendices, and I was uh, catapulted right back into it. I watched every film several times with all the commentaries. I felt like I had been part of the filmmaking process. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. What Peter, the foresight that Peter Jackson and his crew had to have those behind the scenes and the the Costa Botez um, footage that was just, I mean, like just hundreds of hours of just everybody behind the scenes. Yeah. To that point was like almost unprecedented. I mean, you, you had some films who had done that, but like, like it's just, it's nuts what he, what he was able to do. Yeah, I was delighted when Peter Jackson came on board for The Hobbit, and although I agree with some of the criticism regarding CGI, I thoroughly enjoyed those films. It could be, uh, it could be they just gave me that little Middle Earth hit I was craving. Uh, I craved uh, by by the time The Hobbit came out, I had met my now fiance and he, although more of a Jedi than a Hobbit. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Joined in on our cinema visits and joins me in my annual rewatch of the extended versions. He has read and loved the books. So he is a keeper. Yeah, definitely. In yeah. fact, when I was pregnant, we agreed that if it was a boy, it would be Sam Gamgee. Wow. Turned out she was a girl and he got his princess Leia. Whoa. Wow. She is two now, but will be indoctrinated in both the ways of the Force and the Shire. Wow. That is awesome, dude. Wow. Uh, may the Shire be with you. Yeah. I discovered your podcast about a year ago when I moved home and increased my commute. My friend recommended podcasts as I love audiobooks, and so I downloaded an app and immediately searched for anything loader-related. The Unexpected Podcast was the first I opened, and I was immediately hooked. I loved the relationship between Ez and Lane, and have loved getting to know the supporting cast of Sarah, Winnie, Charlotte, Ruth, and all the other uppers. Wow, yeah. I did feel that I was uh, 
recapturing those feelings I had when I first discovered Tolkien. And it was amazing to discover a fellowship of people who shared my passion about Middle Earth. I did feel a bit left out at first, both in time and geographically, as by uh, the time I started listening, you guys were already at Moria and had already hosted LEP1. <laughs> wow, that's nuts. But I now feel that Ohio sounds like it could be a part of Scotland. Mm. That's an honor. I think that's that, really yeah, cool. Yeah, wow. That's wow. really cool. That's cool. And so I don't feel that far away. Amazingly, I have now almost caught up as I am now uh, scouring the Shire whilst wow. you have just released uh, the first of the Hobbit casts. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how I'll cope having to wait for new episodes rather than binging. Uh, through yourselves, I have also discovered Swish and Fluk. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, further up. I am also a Potterhead and love wow. Narnia. That's awesome. Wow. I do feel the podcasts, especially yours, make uh, made lockdown that bit easier and kept me sane. I really just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing it and ask that you never lose that passion and charm you both have. Wait, which one of us has charm? Who's charming? Who has charm and who has passion? Who is? <laughs> Divide them up. Divide them up. We got to know. Label this, you know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, this this Tolkien story is from Fiona Brady. P.S. If you do rearrange your Scotland trip, as I'll buy you a pint. I wow. am telling you, Fiona, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Off the bat, here I want to go to Scotland so bad. And if yeah. there are any any listeners from Scotland who want to grab a drink, now my dad. The minister will not be joining us, but <laughs> he will gladly incur. I've already told him, I was like, we're going to have a scotch or something. We're going to get something, you know? And he's just like, he's like, you go for it. Absolutely. Like, let me know how it tastes. Like, he'll, he'll drink, he'll, he's he'll like drink a warm Pepsi. He's warm like, yeah, Pepsi. He's, like, he's, like, he, yeah. he's like living through me. He's like, I, I kind of want to see, what, I kind of want to see where you go and what the pub looks like. And then I'll just let you guys oh, do your thing. You know, that's awesome. he's great. But dad's, you know, and he's like, I'll go, I'll go play around at golf. But, but <laughs> friends. If you are in Scotland and, and we're able to get out there, I mean, my Lord, I would love to go grab a drink with you guys and, and just, you know, kind of um, hang out. I think it'd be I think it'd be a lot of fun. So, well, I think, yeah, I think I'll, I think I'm going to invite my family along, too, because it turns out Sarah is like 28 percent Scottish. We just found this out, man. So these these DNA wow. tests, they just keep keep unfurling. And Sarah the got reveals. like an, she got an email uh, that her DNA was updated and refined. And before it was like 96%, uh, you know, the British Isles. And we were like, okay, yeah. you're British. That makes sense. Sure. And then uh, comes back 28% Scottish, bro. I, I kind of thought so. I didn't want to say it, but I kind of thought, yeah. you know, I sensed a Scott in there somewhere. I mean, I might have to buy her. A, <laughs> might have to buy her a kilt. I sensed a Scott. Oh, stop Jeez. me. Stop us both. Stop wow. us both. Well, I, think we're gonna, I think we're going to come along. And I, I think I'm like, I think I am like 7% Scottish, actually. I don't know if I've told you this. Are you? My breakdown is like 8% Irish, 7% Scottish, 2% Norway. So, yeah, okay. I'm a Viking. So that's cool. I'm a Viking, bro. Okay. You're a Viking. That makes sense. Yeah, fitting. That's fitting. Yeah, that's, that's fitting. 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 Um, That was awesome, yeah. Fiona. No, I, that I, is cool. Uh, I, Amazing! Thank you for your kind words. Again, uh, we we do not deserve them at all. We're un we are unworthy. We're unworthy. And also, like I want to know, I wonder if she's a distant relation of Matt. Oh my gosh! You know, here's something about my good friend. Shout the out Brady to my bunch. good friend Matt Brady, <laughs> um, who, by the way, he claims royalty over in England. You know <laughs> Matt. All right, you know Matt. Like. Matt's ridiculous. I will let hey, you hear this. Hey, Matt, I claim new royalty over yeah, your right. Steelers, baby. That's right. That's right. Right. Oh, right. ouch. Yeah. Ouch. 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 Um, ouch. Yeah, he's he's well. I mean, yeah, Matt's family like also owns part of like Mount. used to own the square on Mount Vernon. So, oh, know, really? Matt's like, he, oh, yeah, actually. Yeah, he's got like the Butler family type of thing. He's related to butlers and okay. and stuff. So anyways. But yeah, cool connection there. Fiona, I That's think cool. it's neat too. Like the annual kind of go and watch this with the family type of thing. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Because even my sister, who's not really into this, enjoyed mm -hmm. going and just for the experience of like being with the family, 
getting some popcorn. And I'm really hoping yeah. movies movies come back. I, I that whole yeah. experience of going and sitting with your family and just enjoying a night out on a Friday coming out like it's you know you went in the sun was setting you come out the stars are out and you just watched a magical movie and and you just think about it on the way home it's a good fun experience yeah i think of you and i going to see star wars together you know just i was recently right i was just you gonna know? say that's that's the last magical night i had in a the movie theater baby was yeah. with you and star yeah wars. <laughs> man, it's crazy it's great it's crazy is what it is uh yeah. but but yeah. yeah no fiona thank you so much that's that's actually yeah. awesome really cool yeah. and i would definitely take you up on uh on, on um you know getting a getting a pint getting a so, pint yeah. yeah all right uh nate swift here uh let's see here um f- sent us two of these uh this is i think yeah. it's a follow-up so i'm gonna read this first to it um just wanted to encourage y'all and take a moment to um to appreciate all the work that you've done on the podcast with you know an unexpected podcast and further up uh, it's been a huge part of my quarantine and you know i've been realizing that as i'm reading i didn't realize how how many people were diving back into podcasts during quarantine yeah. and so we we got a large batch of these during that time and it makes a lot of mm-hmm. sense but mm-hmm. you know it was getting people through some hard times uh caught up on the narnia but just finished the 50th episode uh of, of an unexpected podcast which was really fun i know this hasn't been uh easy on y'all trying to figure out how to teach at home but as educators you hold one of the most important positions in these times uh i'm sure it hasn't been easy but knowing y'all i'm sure you're holding uh that you're handling it uh, with the wisdom of a wizard and bringing a joy of Hobbit, <laughs> uh, of a Hobbit to lighten these situations. So, hmm. uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So just a quick kind of encouraging, you know, yeah. uh, uh, email there from from Nate Swift. And then here's the the story. So, um, so this is Nate from the city of Oaks in um, Raleigh, North Carolina. I would like hmm. to I I would like to think that that Raleigh would be a distant realm of wood elves isn't mm. that ironic wow very wow uh it's almost, of, did you plan this i you know you know i did you 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 know i do these things um wow a distant realm of wood elves with all the forests in the hills we have uh my tolkien story started when i was about six or seven and mm. i wanted to join my older sister uh, my older sisters who were watching the fellowship but my mom Being the wonderful librarian she is, told me I had to wait until I had read the books. Wow. Right? Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Clearly, uh, waiting was not an option for me. (laughs) My dad, (laughs) dad, being the awesome man uh, of the people, let me sneak (laughs) in in his study and watch them uh, 20 minutes at a time on his computer so mom (laughs) wouldn't get suspicious. That's hilarious. That's awesome. Uh, I instantly got hooked to Middle Earth. The best was going over to my cousin's house where they had the Lord of the Rings video game and Monopoly Mm. edition. Yeah, baby. Uh, I remember vividly being so stoked when we finally beat uh, the dead men of Dunharrow level. (laughs) That's awesome. You know, I've never played it. I've never, I I need to do like a playthrough on our YouTube or something. Like I've never actually played a lot of those games. That'd be cool. Wait, like the video games? You haven't played those? Yeah, not really. I mean, uh, maybe. Oh, man. Yeah. So they're I'm fun. Not, I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're fun. I like them. All right. Um, yeah, fast forward to high school and somehow uh, became friends with eight guys who loved Middle Earth just as much as I did. Going That's a fellowship, as That is a fellowship. That's a fellowship. That, nine. I'm glad you pointed. Nine. <laughs> Look out. Oh, baby. he goes on to say that. Okay, yes. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, right, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, going to a small high school, people quickly started to realize what a strange and mischievous group we were and thus dubbed us the fellowship get out of here that's That's crazy that is sick um we were a collection of jocks bookworms troublemakers and above all uh adventure junkies we got in our fair share of trouble all legal uh we had we had an island in the middle of one of the lakes uh we we would often camp out on oh man that sounds sick that That sounds sounds awesome you know um, our last night, we were all together before heading to college and knew that it'd probably be the last time we were all gathered together. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> wow. wow, bro. I, I, I remember. I have a night like that, too. Um, wow. We all gathered around the fire and just listened to, the con- just listened to Concerning Hobbits and soaked it in. Shut up, mm. man. Shut up. That is sick. That's that is a sick moment right there. Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I don't mean that seriously, Nate. Uh, that's cool. So we, we, 
We still mostly kept in touch, and uh, two were even in my wedding this past October. Uh, one of the greatest joys about my marriage so far was being able to introduce my wife to the world of Tolkien for the first time and see her yeah. falling in love with a tale I had fallen in love with many years before. I bet. Yeah. I bet yeah. that is special and, and, uh, and awesome. Yeah. It is. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Throughout my journey with uh, Lord of the Rings, I have always identified with Mary. Hmm. Okay. All right. I always, always identify with Mary. Um, I hmm. have a strong inclination towards adventure with a touch of mischief. Um, my papa was a detective and taught me how to pick <laughs> locks at a very young age. All but legal. All, all legal. legal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, somehow my parents never seemed to find that out. Oh, that's uh, awesome. Wow, wow. Um, but I have also, well, picking locks. Are you serious right now? Did I really tie this into this chapter? This is insane. Oh, this is crazy. Yeah. Nate, you know. You, this is wow. crazy. This is magical. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I've always been into uh, one of the more responsible ones. Let me see here. Hmm. Did I skip a line there? Oh, yeah. Detective. Yeah, never find out. Yeah. Oh, but I've always, um, I've also always been one of the more responsible ones when the time has called for it. So in the eyes of his parents. Um, I admire how Mary could take heavy situations and bring a lightness and calmness to what hmm. could be a chaotic situation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he does yeah. do that. He's a, yeah, he's a balancer for sure. He yeah. balances, uh, you know, the more serious characters and Pippin in a way, you know, even when the, even when the yeah. hobbits are together, he's kind of that, uh, that leveler between like Frodo and Sam and Pippin. And he's, yeah, yeah. that's a great point. Mm. It is. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Nate says, I hope this finds you in good health and even better spirits. Uh, this is I great. Feel, yeah. Yeah. I feel much needed adventure is in order when the times mm. come for the world to open up again. If you all ever find yourselves in our neck of the woods, uh, give a shout and I'll treat you to a pint at one of our many, many uh, breweries. Cheers. Nate Swift. P.S. I'm not related to Taylor. Thank God. Thank God what you're saved bro you're saved nate may the time swiftly come <laughs> when we can adventure down in north Carolina. i would love to go take a trip to north carolina we actually have friends Same. that are, are are moving there uh, that are going to be retiring there soon and uh they've already said gotta come visit us and we said of course we will and uh we're there we're there moving oh man i think it's where wake forest is or something I can't remember okay. the, I can't remember the, the but um, it's like halfway between the mountains and the, uh, and the, the beaches and North Carolina. It sounds like I haven't spent much time in North Carolina, but it sounds like it's a very, it's got a little bit of everything. It seems like, yeah, you got the, you got the Atlantic ocean and, and beautiful beaches. And then you, you go further West and you're into the, oh, the, the Appalachian. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Pretty cool and bunches of forests. So Nate, I would love, I would love that. I uh, man, he's hilarious. Just even his story, uh, written in such a way that conjures up, uh, yeah, feelings of Mary. I would say that's yeah. that's cool thinking about. Um, man, a fellowship, having a fellowship well, in, in high school. I didn't really have that. Like I, you were saying you had that night, yeah. that night with your with your friends, and I was thinking, like my night was by myself, just listening to concerning hobbits, <laughs> like solo <laughs> like maybe with my maybe with my bible like uh, like like getting deep into matthew or something i don't know my friends yeah. were matthew mark luke and john and oh i was God. just i was in my in my room or something <laughs> i don't know uh Dude. but yeah what a cool what a cool um and i love that just like a not 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 a misfit group but a group of uh a diverse group of guys like jocks bookworms troublemakers right uh right. that's cool that's what the fellowship is it's a bunch of different it is you dwarves and elves and uh, men from different areas and and hobbits and a, and a wizard. Yeah. It's just it's like it's almost like it shouldn't work, but it's a representation of uh, of a wide uh, you know a, a wide representation I should say. So yeah, which is good. You need you need those different aspects, oh, yeah. and I I think that's that's really cool. You know, um, yeah, it's crazy. Lane's like uh, was was just a year behind me, and yeah. so I was, I was a year ahead of him in school, um, but. Uh, I do remember having that night where my good buddy, I just referenced him, Matt. Yeah. Uh, he told all of us, he said, I remember it was actually, oh gosh, I guess that was, was technically college. 
college. But still, we had this meeting where we, we all kind of went to a branch campus. And we all knew we were like people were going to other bigger main campuses. And Matt was like leaving for Portland. And I remember having this final like, let's go fishing. <laughs> Let's all get together and just do this thing. But you have those moments. That's cool. I mean, that's cool. Yeah, where, where, where you gather with friends and you say, you know what? Um, especially, yeah, even senior year, um, we had a big bonfire and it was sort of like some of these people I'm never going to see again. Never going to see them again. Yeah. Interesting. But yeah. I, I think that I don't know if it's the pandemic or, or what, but I often think that more and more just in general. I think like, um, you know, like what. Uh, you could, I, I mean, it seems like any situation now, you're just like, when's the last last time we're all going to be together in this capacity? You know, like, is this the last time I'm going to see, I don't know, you, you wonder that. I, the older my parents get, I'm like, you know, anything can happen. You know what I mean? And, yeah, sure. Uh, I don't know, it's just it's crazy to think about. And, yeah, anyway. But yeah, yeah. very uh, very awesome Tolkien stories, as always. Our favorite part of, of every episode is getting to know all of you better and... Um, yeah, it's inspiring. It's inspiring to uh, to be a part of uh, of of your adventurer. Uh, adventurer, excuse me, son. Wh- whatever. I mean, I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm, but I'm mm-hmm. very thankful for everyone. Yeah, who who sends those in. So me too. Yeah. Me too, man. Me too. Um, all right, man. On to riddles in the dark. Yeah. On so to riddles in the uh, dark. We've got uh, we've got um, empty eggs. There's there's no no more riddles. We've gone through them all in our uh, in our inbox. Uh, this is so better you, though because I have this some is riddles. Cool. Yeah. Oh, do you? Sure you do. I'm I'm looking mine up. So uh, <laughs> uh, if you want your riddle to be on a podcast, all you got to do is email it to us. Um, so sure. so send that to an unexpected pod at gmail dot org or com it's com net right? dot com uh yeah, wait net. a second middle dot right. middle earth so what we're gonna do until we get those and i guess like you said people might find this more entertaining is we're gonna uh, <clears throat> pick riddles to give each other yep so i've got one pulled up are you ready i'm ready you're never gonna get this okay uh, i literally searched what is the hardest riddle in the world so are you serious yeah I searched the oldest riddle of all time. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. Old versus hard. We'll see. (laughs) Holy. (laughs) All right. I mean, seriously, it's it's, it's, it's a a battle royale. Sometimes just, uh, I don't know. Okay. Give Mm -hmm. it to me. Come on. All right. Here it is. Here it is. It's a one-word answer. All right? So don't think too hard. I'm not going to. What word... In the English language, does the following. The first two letters signify a male. The first three letters signify a female. The first four letters signify a great, while the entire world signifies a great, while the entire word signifies a great woman. What is the word? Well, the first two words, the first two letters, you said. Letters. It's one word. Right. It's one word. Right, man. right, Don't right. This. You're doing the great so far. <laughs> the first two letters are H-E. Okay. okay. He. Okay. He. Yeah. Now, you right. said the, the uh, hold on. You said the first three, mm. H-E-R. Okay. Yeah, okay. H-E-R. All right. What was the second? It was the third line. Give me the third line. The first four letters signify a great a great yeah that's kind of a bad line but a i'm not gonna great. i'm not gonna change it because you're doing really well so far so can I'm you not spell gonna great that. for me is it is it g-r-e-a-t or oh. is it g-r-a-t-e yes. g-r-e-a-t great okay yeah they signify a great a great all right next line someone great i would even say someone great. someone great um someone you yeah while the entire mm-hmm. word signifies a great woman, what is the word? Hmm. Wow. I think what it means to say the first four letters signify a great man, while the entire word signifies a great woman. You're going to get this, dude. You're so far the first. H E R is what I got. 
Yeah, you're, that, that's right. So far. So, so he, her. Now think right. the first four letters. So you got the first three. You just got to come up with one more that signify a great man. A great man. Uh huh. This story a is a lord. Story is, well, you got to use H E R, and then you got to add a letter. Yeah, I was thinking. <laughs> lord, but Lord doesn't have H E R. <laughs> All right. H E R. Uh, uh, is it an actual person's name? No, no. It's a it's a type of so like this story is full of these. It's full of these. Oh, okay, okay. A hero, sure. Okay, and then so, so the last one is a female who's yeah great, right? Uh, heroin female. Yeah, you got it. Nice job. I nailed it. Yes, you friends, did. Friends, friends, let it be known. Let it be known that on March thirteenth at yeah. twelve. 26 26 a.m this old wizard got his first riddle right bro that was sick i was yeah i don't shaking in your boots weren't you shaking in your boots i i was i was it also kind of i was like oh my gosh there are like three typos in this riddle i think i picked the wrong website (laughs) all right i'm ready for mine baby i'm ready all right all right i got two for you and then we're calling it here okay two all right yeah two um how is that fair hey 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 what has a neck but no head? Oldest riddle in the book. A neck but no head? A guitar. Right? What has a neck? That no gone. head of a guitar. Does that work? Dag, that it's gone. That right actually answer, kind of works. <laughs> a neck but no head? This is old? Like everyone everyone knows this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows. It. Really? Mm-hmm. It's the... <laughs> I can't, I can't I tell told, you what, I totally what I just thought. looked this up on the fly. So, um, no, actually, I'm that works. I'm going with guitar. Like, guitar. Well, wow, that's really, that's what's, really close. What? It's it's a shirt. A shirt. Oh. A shirt. Neck Sorry, of a shirt. A neck of a shirt. No head. All right. That's good. Sorry. That's really good. Yeah. I, 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 uh, okay. what has, what has legs? But doesn't walk. Table. Yeah, table. table chair. Yeah. Oh, exactly. a chair. Okay. Either All one. Right. Either legs one. of a table, legs of a chair. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. Hey, good. We both, hey, you know what? We're, our folks we're realizing, better. are we just trying to like pat our stats here? Because we were so abysmal Soft at the first balls. like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the first riddles were so hard that we're like, oh, uh, so guys, seriously? Hold on a second now. This is not like. You know, they were stumpers, man. They sent us stumpers like they sent us stumpers. I, I literally think those ones from Todd, too, we had done before. And that's the only reason I got those right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Remember last episode? Yes, I was I like, do. Oh, yes, I, I know do. these. I know them. it's because we did them in a previous episode. And we just don't want to go look it up, I think. Right. All right, buddy. Well, um, I don't know. Like, what's the load sharing capacity well, at now? Hey, load sharing. Look, here, here's the thing, friends. Yeah. We are super. Again, thanks again for hanging out with us. I mean, this has been cool. I'm, yeah. I'm loving this. We get this renewed energy and spirit, and we're just feeling yeah. really good about everything. Um, so you can share the load again over on Patreon, uh, posting content there for you guys, and uh, you know, just we appreciate everyone over there who's who's supporting us, and and it's just been fantastic. We're um, yeah. We got some special stuff planned, my friend. Spring break's yeah. coming up. Look for some new announcements to be coming here uh, uh, shortly. But, okay, uh, you can do that. You can also follow us. Following us on social media is really cool. It's, it's actually, I know that there are some folks who just, you know, listen to the podcast and don't follow on social media. But the one thing it will do, and even though we had this big chat about social media the last episode, if, if anything, our social media is simply just to inform folks about when the podcast is being posted. And, and mm-hmm. things like that. It's really an informational kind of just like, hey, here's what's up. You know, here's what we're doing. And uh, if you if you want. And there's to- a there's a lot of old just like um, clips and videos. And yeah, it's almost kind of like our appendices in a way. It's a visual sure. like just I'm looking at the videos of us setting up the the remember the the original rig for videos. Oh, <laughs> I mean, there, there are. There are three videos of us you were trying riding to, that oh, horse. Two videos. And then, yeah. I mean, just ridiculous shenanigans that never get mentioned. Or me smoking Kev's cigarette. Remember that Hold one? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. 
Do you remember, remember that? when we? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I do remember you smoking that. Do you, do you remember? So we set that rig up. We spent an yeah. hour on that rig, and you said, "As as I've got some books, we could just set the cameras on top of these books or this stack of games." And I was like, "What in the?" And it ended up being the more clutch, stable <laughs> thing to do. And I was like, because oh, it was th- wobbling. Remember, yeah, it was, was like, wobbling every time. Down the drain. Doing. Whatever. <laughs> I kept that clamp, but I'm going to use it for something. I don't know what. Uh, but anyways. Oh, anyway, yeah. Man. So the whole point yeah. is, you know, go check that out. And it's cool when, like, you know, maybe when the show comes out, uh, it, it's it's nice because if, if folks search it and they find it, and uh, whether it be, you know, actors or whoever, we, uh, gosh, dude, I, I want there to be a positive conversation around this show. And I want this mm. to, be, to be a positive community where, where we can just enjoy and laugh and have fun. And we're sitting at yeah. the kids table, you know, we're sitting at the yeah. kids table having a good time. So um, it does help when you go subscribe to the social media or send us that Bywater post over at an unexpected pod at gmail.com. So, yeah, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. All right. Well, I got to find my lines. I was literally just going through our Instagram and reminiscing. Uh, we want to thank you for, this is Fortnite farewells, you know. Um, yeah. Might be a fortnight, might be longer. You never know. It's unexpected right. now, guys. Uh, we want to thank you for making bail with us. Thank goodness all the snows melted here in the Shire and things are warming up because we're heading into Chapter 10. A warm welcome. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if, if you like our podcast, don't forget to subscribe, like us, write a review, leave a comment, or send us a shadow fax. <laughs> <laughs> I can't whistle. <laughs> I can't either. We'll see you in a fortnight. Remember, Bilbo knows. <laughs>